All right, let's begin. Episode 50. Wow. That's a lot. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Episode 50. So that's like... I don't know. If you say we've done five hours on average, um, and if you take away... That's 250 hours, and you take away all the smoking, uh, complaining about Apple... It's probably it's probably about eight hours of code we've actually done. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let me say that to everybody. Um, so we've got Mr. G. Uh, sh oh, that's me. <laughs> Mr. G. Andy Magic Knight. Proud Seven. Russell Mills. Uh, Retro Father. Doctor Me. Uh, uh, have I got everybody there? Amok. Welcome. Furay. Welcome. Kenneth Myra, welcome. Uh, ooh. Prince Faze, welcome. Doc, docs to me, I think I already said, but welcome again. Uh, oh, oh, actually, I'm going to... Octal0151 or Octal105. Uh, oh, <laughs> straight away a raid as well. It's Hayes raid. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Grey Defender... Try to get through these quickly. <laughs> Cheers, Wicked. Um, Decor 29. And now Hayes as well. And everybody that's come along with Hayes. Welcome, guys. <laughs> oh, no. Hayes is here now. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Thank you for the raid. Uh, thank you for the raid, Hayes. Welcome, everyone that's come along with, uh, with Hayes. I'm going to pour wine while TTS lady speaks. Oh, that's it. I think they might have put some anti-spam protection into it, you know. Oh, that didn't unscrew properly. That's a bit of a worrying sign. Mm, okay. Yeah, that did not unscrew properly. That's a very badly fitted cap. So this is... Um, Apparently quite a nice wine, so um, we shall see. Uh, who else came in then with Hayes? So, uh, lots of goggles, uh, pocket raptors, quadrisol, uh, C64 Mark, uh, CB Mix, welcome guys. Yeah, TTS seems to be broken for some reason. I tried to do the... I was really pleased with myself for thinking of the green bottles thing, and then it didn't work, so... <laughs> Thanks for the resub, Ducks to me. Uh, four months, awesome. A couple of bottles of wine myself. Yeah, so I've got a bottle of white to get me started. Um, I've gone for a Sauvignon, a chili Sauvignon Blanc. So, um, oh, that is very nice, actually. Quite dry though for Sauvignon Blanc, unusually, um, but nice. And then I've got a bottle of cheap. Uh, Waitrose Malbec for, for later. You may notice is missing a glass already, so we have to draw by Sid. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yes, you are trolling by Sid. Let me put my coat there. Have I ever been to the US? Yeah, I've been to the US a few times. I've been to uh. Where have I been? I've been to uh, Florida, uh, New York a bunch of times, and Vegas as well. I actually got married in Vegas. My, my not-so-long-lasting marriage <laughs> started in Vegas. Tien. Tien. Let me see if I can get Tennessee. Yeah. Uh yeah, don't get me started on that, Chiz. <laughs> it's it's only really about five followers, I think. The rest are bots. Forty, I think that's being generous, Hayes. <laughs> uh no, it wasn't by Elvis, but it was by um it was by um uh, I, I don't think you could call him a priest. It was the officiator. 
was um mm-hmm. was late uh and they were obviously on a they were obviously on a tight schedule so they basically rushed through the service it was kind of ridiculous um very very ridiculous indeed uh but funny thank you for the follow pocket raptors um yeah the guy was just like do you and I was like, what just happened okay uh can you show the game for the newbies here yeah sure so uh we're working on a single screen uh arcade game for for one or two players uh, and this is where we're at so far so we're actually doing quite well we're quite close to this game being ready um you'll have to excuse the level because the level is a test level just to to get through the end quickly but the idea is there'll be a lot more platforms and uh, and things and we do actually have more platforms uh, in places actually can i let me see if i can load a proper level in uh Uh, hmm. I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, Let me have a look at the map data. Just one second. Bear with me a second, guys, while I just try and figure out if there's an easy way of doing this. Ah, no, there's probably not, actually. Uh, Because, unfortunately, um, this data here uh yeah it's not uh, it's not gonna work I, I we might do some level loading later on so when we get around to that level you'll be able to see more levels but basically the idea is um the levels will be a lot more intricate than this there'll be lots of platforms you can jump on um and you can color the platforms by shooting color in a platform your own color means if you if you kill an enemy while you're stood on that platform you will gain extra points kill enemies by stunning them and then absorbing them like this. And when you've killed enough, you use the weight of both players to push down this switch. Players get fatter as they as they go on. Uh, there's a bug with the door exit, which we need to solve. Uh, but tonight we're going to finish off the uh, the bonus screen. It's almost there. It doesn't need much. Um, we just need these values to actually be pulled in from the game, which they're not at the moment. They're just they're just random values that we've put in there, hard coded. Um, yeah, so so the idea is is uh, in two players, it's very much a competitive uh, two players. So while you're both working to complete the level, you're aiming to try and win this crown. Uh, whoever has the highest bar at the bonus stage gets the crown, uh, and at the beginning of the bonus stage, whoever has the crown gets ten thousand points bonus. Uh, so in this case, uh, player one had the crown to begin with, so gained ten thousand points. But player two got everything else, so he got the highest bar and therefore won the crown. Um, you can also during play as well. Let me show you during play. Um, if a player dies, they drop the crown. So there's an incentive to kind of try and get the other player killed, or or to make sure that if they do get killed, that you you are ready to kind of jump in and grab that crown from them. So you can see now when this player dies, he drops the crown on the floor, so I can run in and grab it. Uh, so there's a bit of competition there, uh, along with the floor colorings as well. So you'll see if this player tries to grab an enemy, he'll get a minus 100. Oh, that one. You see the minus 100 U as it goes down the screen? That's basically because I'm stood on player one's color. So if you can color the ground underneath the, the opposition player, um, then you will gain some bonus points when they when they hit things and they will lose a few points. So you can see there, player one gained 100 points. Um, instead of player two getting 450, they only got 350. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And as, as you go on, you get fatter and fatter, which makes you slower, which gives the, gives the, uh, the, the lighter player an advantage. So see now, if I try and walk both players at the same time, player one is a bit faster because he's not as fat. So, um, and when you fill this meter up at the bottom, the switch activates and you can go through the door. That's, that's pretty much it. Right, let me start the the quiz as well for you guys. Uh, find the right screen. Uh, or is it that one? There we go. So there's a couple of things I want to do tonight. First of all, um, it'd be funny if it was Action Biker now, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, Action Biker is in there. I'm pretty sure it's in there. 
Yeah, quick here, quickly, get it, get the quiz in before uh, Steps arrives and takes over. I have no idea what that is. Oh, but I don't think it's what. I, no, it's not what I think it is. But uh, or maybe it is actually. I can't remember. Oh, nice, nice haze. It wasn't what I thought it was. I thought it was Afterburner, but it's not. Similar game though, but lots of things. Yeah, so what we're going to do tonight, um, there are a few bugs in the game. I'm going to leave the, the bugs as they are for now. Uh, what I want to do is get the, the the full flow of the game, even if there are bugs in it. I want to get the flow working from the intro screen into the game, into the bonus, and back into another level again. So we can start actually loading individual levels in. Um, did I try Z-Twing? No, I haven't yet. I've, been, I've watched loads of videos on it. I just haven't got around to uh, buying it and trying it out yet. I, I actually, see I've got it open here, I actually went to put it onto, I was going to get it onto a, my GPD today, because uh, it looks like the perfect game for this, um, but the thing wasn't charged up, so I am going to charge it up and give it a play at some point soon, uh, but I think it's the perfect kind of handheld game by the looks of things. Um, it's very impressive though, it's very nice. I mean, I'm I'm really intrigued to see what Sarah can do uh, with other genres as well, because she's absolutely nailed the shoot up genre. Um, I'm excited to see. I forget the name. It's some witch, some it's an RPG with a witch in it. I can't remember the exact name of it, but that looks really interesting as well. Uh, she's got some nice, um, nice effects going on. Briley Witch, that's it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it does look look really promising. Um, and I think it's it's because shoot 'em ups are shoot 'em ups are okay, but you're kind of tied into a very uh, specific way of doing things. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see see what she does with an RPG because I think she'd be very very good at that. But yeah, very very cool. I'm I'm looking forward to playing it. I just need to get the time to do it. Um, today I was kind of busy doing some other stuff, so I didn't get around to doing it properly. Uh, and I kind of lost lost motivation to do it when I found out the GPD. In fact, I've done it again. I put the GPD down without sticking it on charge. Oh, and I know why, because I couldn't find a charge cable for it. Um, I should have to do it on my computer. Let me just pull this lead off here. Just use the PlayStation lead. Um, but yeah, I do definitely do want to play it. And I really liked Gemini Wing as well. I thought Gemini Wing was a pretty good shoot mob. So if it's anything like that, I'll be I'll be very impressed. But it looks like it's it's Gemini Wing plus plus, which I really like the idea of. Uh well thought out. Um so yeah, it should be should be kind of exciting. Let's give that a charge. I think I can actually play that tomorrow. Yes, I did know she worked on Elite Dangerous um, and a lot of um, Mega CD games as well back in the day. Which is kind of cool. Elite Dangerous is a great game as well. I definitely recommend that. If you're into, if you're into that kind of space, um, space trader style game, Elite Dangerous is, is really good. Um, I, I definitely recommend a decent joystick for those. It's really hard. The first time I tried to play it on mouse. Uh, it was really bad, and then I tried to play it on an Xbox pad, and it was a bit better, but but not not um not as easy as on a real joystick. Uh, multiplayer Elite when oh that would be amazing, wouldn't it? As she's saying that the um uh, the Ultimate sixty four could probably manage that, I reckon. Right, let me add points to you all as well, and then we'll get cracking on this. Wow, 83 users, really? Okay. Seems like a lot. Okay, so what do I want to do tonight? So I want to start by adding the, the counters in. So at the moment, um, let me bring up where we're at in here let me move some stuff around so i've got so i've got some stuff that i need so zero page i'm going to keep that open uh and i'm going to open bonus on this side 
I wish any of this made sense anymore, but it doesn't. It's all in kind of weird places. So yeah, the bonus screen has a few counters. It has four counters in total. Two of them aren't uh, two of them are counters, two of them are just pointers to whoever won a particular thing. So one of the pointers, uh, and when I say pointers, it points to player one or two. It has the value one or it has the value two. Um, oh, no, I mean, when can we play Elite Dangerous Multiplayer? I need to get back into it. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be really good. I'd love to play that. Um, it's been a long time since I played it, but I'd be happy. Well, say a long time. It's probably been about a year, um, but I'd definitely like to get back into it again. I'd like to start again, actually, because I feel like I've taken kind of the wrong path in a lot of things. So, um, But yeah, I'd, I'd be up for that, definitely. It'd be good if we could get a group of us together and just fly around and cause havoc. Oh, steps! Do you know what? Because you're such a such a gambler, I'm I'm going to add points just to you for for missing that. There you go. Oh, actually, you've not got you've done all right. Not too many um, not too many uh, not too lower points count. So, uh, what's ED Elite Dangerous? Um, and it's very good. I definitely recommend it, especially if you've got VR. If you've got a VR headset, Elite Dangerous is one of the, the, the best uh, VR experiences you can have on the PC. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so these two values here, this is... Uh, I don't know if it actually tells me in this list or not. Uh, this is player one, two that got to the exit first. Actually, it's not, so... Third, fourth is crown wearer. So there are two values at the end which just point to player one or two. The first one is which one got to the exit first, um, because this is important for, uh, if I've got the screen open, this here, play two wins the race. So in two player mode, whoever gets to the door first um, will earn an extra 5,000 points on this screen. Um, so there's always a there's always a reason for um, being faster than the other player. So if you're behind, i.e. you're this guy here who hasn't eaten very much compared to this guy who's eaten everything, you've got a better chance of winning this. So that's this is one of the things I'm trying to make sure is always the case in this game that there's always a way for the player who's behind to catch up. So this is one of those uh, mechanisms, and the other one is whoever has the crown when we exit this screen now. This is what we're going to work on once we've got all these all these values working correctly. We're going to work on the crown award and how that actually works. So with the crown, what will happen um, is if you finish a level with two players, then somebody gets awarded the crown, which means if you start the game with two players, nobody will have the crown. There'll be no crown on screen. Nobody you know, can, can drop the crown. Uh, none of the enemies drop the crown. There's just no crown on the screen. Uh, but when you finish the level, um, Whoever, because two players have finished the level, somebody will be awarded the crown. And then on the next level, that player will start with the crown. So that's kind of the, the idea of that. And I've, I've completely stolen that from uh, Super Mario 3D World, um, as I have with a few other kind of things uh, in here. Namely, the um, this effect is kind of stolen a bit from Sonic 2, a bit from uh, Mario Golf. There's a, lo a lot of inspiration in here. So this the play one that the player that has the crown is going to be the easy one uh, to fill in. So let's let's start by let's go through all of these one at a time and 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 fill them in. So whoever has the crown is going to be an easy one because that value is actually already uh, in here. Player has the crown. So all we really need to do is we need to grab this value and plunk it in. Uh, which one is the crown? This this value here. So when we initialize here. All we need to do is then accumulate the crown dot player as crown and store that at bonus counters plus three. It's as simple as that. So let's try that out. Let's just make sure that works. So at the moment, uh, player one is being forced to have the crown. So you can see, we'll we'll make player two pick the crown up, and hopefully that changes. Right, let's give it a try. 
How's everybody Saturday been so far? I went to sleep last night at 7 o'clock. Well, I went for a nap at 7 o'clock last night, and then I woke up at just on midday today. So it was one hell of a long sleep. Uh, okay, right, I need, to, I need to lose the crown so this player can grab it. So let's... There we go. Right, I have the crown there, so. Not bad. Been using your videos to help me code my game. Oh, cool. Any video in particular that you've been helped by today or 17 hours sleep? Yeah, it was. It was it was quite a lot. So you can see no oh, actually. Actually, it's saying that nobody had the crown here. This is wrong. Okay, that's fine. Uh but it's also not awarding the race at the bottom, so I'm a bit concerned as to what's going on here. 24 hours sleep. <laughs> Went to bed at 4am and woke up four hours later. So, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't be too jealous. That's that's a very unusual sleep for me. I think my body finally just gave up, and when I went for a nap, it just said, nope, you're staying asleep. Um and slept heavily so <laughs> I was trying to learn to code this haze making distracting me with his game <laughs> Docs to me been in a birthday party for my next oldest daughter today awesome right it is getting a bit warm here I was a bit worried it was going to be too cold but now I'm actually quite warm so let's turn that on a daily team meeting is at 12 12 midday please tell me midday i went to bed at three and got up at 11. <laughs> yeah not wrong with that no wrong with that sometimes you just need to have a little bit of extra sleep okay so for some reason this value is not correct so i, I just want to put a break point in here and see what's going on here because it's kind of like two things are going wrong here um it's also not saying who won the race, so I need to make sure that I'm not destroying more here. But I don't think I am. <laughs> Ten years old today, awesome. I miss I miss those those times of my kids. My kids are there, uh let me see if I get this right without screwing it up. My kids are twenty five and twenty two, or will be twenty two this year. Um so all I get now is kind of, I, I don't get any fun times like that. Birthdays are quite boring. Um, uh, ah, okay. So the screen is initialized. Sorry, the bonus screen is initialized before it actually runs. So we want to move that into the start section. You see, that's too cold now. All right, let me turn that one on. Turn this one off. Okay, so initialize is just kind of clearing that. Uh, we might have to move that somewhere, but let's put it uh, in here. I think when the bonus starts is the right time to start setting those values. So let's change that to... Oh, I just need to check my message. It's always important. Just in case it's important, sorry. Okay. Okay, set, uh, set the bonus values. So we're going to use this area to set those values. So I'm hoping, hoping now this will work properly. <laughs> well, if their birthday is with me, then it's interesting. But generally, it's not with me. So I, I don't have the, I don't have birthday parties for my kids. I guess is what I'm saying anymore. Um, hence why they're, they're they're not quite as. I mean, I'm sure they're exciting for them. Uh, they just go out and get drunk, I guess. But um, I don't have, oh shit, no, I wanted that crown, hang on. There we go, right. So hopefully we should see player two has crown here, which they did. And the player two crown fell up. Now, it, it happens a little bit too quick, so I may slow that down at some point. Um, you can see player two got all the points then. 
but that's fine. Let's do um, player two wins race because that's going to be an easy one. Uh, whoever wins the race here is going to be an easy one to fill in. Um, so for that, we're going to need to have a look at the door code. Um, and in here, we're going to have to store a, a first through door value. The other thing I want to do today as well is set the crown to be at the correct place on the on the players' heads. I've got an easy way to do that, but um, how does my brain not melt from the assembler? It's because I just love doing it. I do it every day, so um, it's become kind of second nature to me now. He keeps it cool with wine. Yeah, this is my this is my brain water cooling, wine cooling. Uh, hey, Yaroslavus, welcome to the stream, dude, and hey, Fit Trend as well. My birthday will be on Twitch this year. Yeah, my birthday was. Um, I did the uh, Luma stream on my birthday. Well, it, on the night before my birthday. So I, when when midnight struck, it was it was my birthday, um, and then it got messy. That's when the that's when the uh, tequila came out and it got messy. Um, yeah, alcohol definitely helps. I don't know why. I don't know why that is, but for some reason, alcohol seems to work uh, quite well for me. Okay, so in the same place where we set all these values, we're also going to set that the first through the door. So, so when we initialize the door, we set that value. Okay, so now we need to work out is a player going through the door. So there is check each player. Here we go. Only check if not X in. So we do this if the player is uh, not already X in, and then. Only able to exit from the ground. So here is where we're exiting. Uh, and we need to know which player that is. So we go, X goes from one down to zero. So it's, we need to store the value of X plus one uh, into, into that location. Only if uh, first, through door um if that's already set then we don't do anything otherwise we are going to transfer x to the accumulator who got that dr goggles got that nice salamander is a great game as well that's, that is a proper classic humor uh if you haven't played that dos i definitely recommend it very good game um, I would pro I mean, the C64 version is pretty good, but I would probably go for, um, oh God, what else did it come out on? Can't remember what the systems it came out on, but they're, they're, it's an arcade game primarily. So you want one that's as close to the arcade as possible. You can probably get it on MAME actually, I think. Okay, so I'm going to uh, add one to this value because obviously it's going to be zero and one, not one or two. And then we're going to store that at, um, first through door and so whoever goes through the door first should trigger this value and then that value will be available uh available to our bonus in here so now we can load this will be door i'm trying to cut back on the cigarettes um at the moment so tonight i'm going to take a break every 90 minutes rather than every hour or maybe even two hours i'm not sure yet um uh toilet toilet forgive me obviously i may need to go to the bathroom at some point um uh but i'm not going to smoke as much anyway that's for sure uh hey bat up vaped no 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 I, I i've been smoking for a while but i'm gonna i'm trying to stop it so the the problem is is when I drink alcohol I really want to smoke a lot I barely smoke um, really I know it doesn't seem that way but I, I barely smoke it's only really when I drink alcohol so uh, but I do have I do have a vape pen which I will I will try and uh, utilize instead although it probably needs a new coil now so it's probably not ideal. So I drink alcohol all the time. 
No, I, I uh, although I do drink kind of excessively at the moment, um, mainly because of the streams. Yeah, that's not even working. So, uh, but yeah, I just I just want to try and cut down a little bit because, um, firstly, it's kind of expensive. Uh, secondly, it's not good for my health. So, okay, let's try this. So, um. I can't remember. I think it said player two through the door first. So we'll try and get player one to win this this time. So this time I'm going to get the player one the crown. Uh, and I'm going to get it through the door first as well. So let's get the crown to player one. Uh, there we go. Oh, keep the crown. There we go, right, so player one through the door first and had the crown. So now we should see player one in both of the top and bottom section. Player one has crown. Player one wins right. Okay, there was there was a strange little shuffle at the end then. Um I'm not I don't know if you saw that. There was a strange shuffle towards the end. No expert, but surely it's easy to go to straight to no nicotine at all. Yes, that's that's why I'm not too fussed. I, I mean, I'll keep this around um, just in case I kind of desperately need to smoke. Um, I've deliberately only got um, five or so cigarettes left, so um, I've not filled them up like I would normally. I'd normally add some to my, my co-op shop and uh, get them delivered, but um, I've deliberately not done that this week. I want to... I want to force myself not to do it, so. Uh, yeah, smoking is really bad for me. Don't blame us. No, I don't. I don't blame you. I don't blame you guys. It's my own choice, so. Uh, but I do need to, I do need to cut back on a few things. Um, I've already cut out red meat from my diet, which is, um, has been a very strange uh, transition, but I do feel a lot better for it. Uh, but what I'm finding now is I'm eating, um, I'm eating a lot more fatty food than I would do before. So I need to try and cut that down as well. So, oh my god, why is this not working? All right, I'll figure that out shortly. Fatty food is okay, yeah, not in the not in the quantities I've been eating them. It's not. <laughs> uh, all right, let's. Uh, I want to do that again because if you watch the very last stage, um, the very last stage, there was a bit of a weird flicker, and I want to just see if that was, um, if it was just if I was just imagining it or if it actually did happen. I think it did happen, but um, I just want to confirm it. All right, so play one through the door first. You can see I definitely need to sort that crown out. All right. Now I'm going to slow it down to 50%. Thanks for the host as well, Proud7. I missed that one. Thank you. Okay, so I just want to keep an eye on what happens here towards the end. Yeah, there was, there was a definite jump between the two. Um, I am not entirely sure what happened there, but it definitely seems to do with this this value here. So I'm just going to confirm that by by setting that value to zero now. Um, yeah, left one the left one dropped down, and this one went up a bit. So it's almost like it's almost like the value transferred to here at the last moment um, because these definitely don't seem to to be in the right kind of uh, ratio, the right proportions compared to each other for 15,000 and 18,000. So um, I would expect this one to be much closer to this. So I'm just going to turn that, that one off. It wouldn't surprise me because this is, um, I'm just going to put zero in there. Because this is the one we were working on last time and, and it was a lot of kind of shifty work around that. So. He tried to cut back to 15 and he said, if you cut back to a thousand food, won't taste good. Yeah. 
I'll get there. I, there's a few things I need to do. I, I've realised I'm at that age now where actually I do need to give a shit about what I eat and uh, and what I put into my body. Uh, and considering how much alcohol I've been drinking recently, I think it's probably prudent to to at least look after myself in all the other ways. Uh, alcohol's not going to stop, but um, I think I could definitely make a, a a good good change in my diet at least. Okay, so I've turned off the the crown award, uh, not the crown, the race award. Ah, ah, interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we need to fix that. I don't know what's going on there, but um, it certainly seems like when a player is awarded uh, the race win, that one one of them jumps up quite a lot. Uh, player two jumps up quite a lot. I wonder if it goes the other way. Let's let's try let's try getting player two through the door first. Yeah, man, fifty episodes. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of astounded. I must be. I must easily be up to about hundred overall, um, because I only do these on Saturdays, and I, I do. I was well. I mean, primarily, primarily, I was doing Saturday and Thursday, but recently I have started doing. Um, I yeah, see, so there's definite bugs there. Definitely need to fix that as well. Okay. Um. So player two got the uh, door win this time. Oh, st still have zero in there, don't I? God damn it. Right. Should be proud of 50. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's definitely a lot. Uh, in what just about about eighteen months or so, I can't remember exactly when I started. I do. I know it's over a year, and I know it's less less than two. So, uh, but I couldn't tell you the exact numbers. I'm sure somebody can. Yeah, the the door exit code is is completely broken. <laughs> Okay, so player two definitely had the crown then, so I shouldn't see anything move here. Okay, so it's only if player one wins, then it goes screwy. So let's have a look at that code. Okay. Oh god, this is the code I don't like. Alright. This is gonna be fun. So enemies killed. Uh, not the crown win, race win. Here we go. Last stage, it's called. So it's gonna find that. So that's this bit here. Uh, this is where it's grabbing that value, uh, and this is where it's updating. So, um, the actual update to the player bar height is here. Um, Which is unusual because I would not expect this to change between players unless the scores are fine. So it has to be something to do with this. It has to be something to do with this this section here. Um, which is making me think stage increment Y. Y is correct. No, something something is definitely off here. Oh, hang on, we've got this here. Transfer committee, so that gives us zero or one based on this. No, this should be all right. Um, hmm. Okay. So what I want to do now is I just want to check uh, if I specifically put one in here, does it work properly? We have two seconds lag tonight. Ah, oh, cool. Ah, but CB Meeks has 
uh, 17 seconds load. Z80 is the code. Oh, that's true. Well, Z80 is the is the CPU. I don't like. I don't like any code written in Z80. I like I like most code written in six five zero two, but that particular piece of code, um, I'm not that keen on. Uh, mainly because I wrote it uh, months and months ago, and then came back to it last week and tried to refactor a whole huge chunk of it, which has obviously caused problems. Okay, so player one should win a few points here for the crown. Then we should see player two go. So I'm expecting player one to advance past this point, but it goes back down again. Always on player one as well. Okay, next thing to check is is the well. First of all, let's we can we can restore this now, so that the first three door actually does win the crown. Um, What I want to check is, is it happening in the right bonus stage? So I'm going to put a break point between each bonus stage. Um, and that should help us see if it happens during the count up or in the stage after it. There may be a fifth bonus stage, uh, which is being actioned here. Um, so I'm going to put the break point there. And so we should get a break after each step in the in the system. Coming in the in the park over the road. <laughs> uh, oh shit! Should probably be able to pay attention. Okay, so I need player two on the screen to get all this to work, but I need player one to pick everything up and get through the door first as well. Actually, it doesn't matter if he wins the crown, but um, oh, it's a bit late now. Uh, okay, as long as he goes through the door first. Okay, so stage one is over. Uh, apparently stage two is over. Oh, uh, what? Oh, I know. I oh, God damn it. Because of where I put the break in here. Oh my God, I have the tiger. <laughs> because of where I put the break here, it's actually happening here. So I'm just going to move the break uh, to here instead. Oops. Oh my god, what have I done? I closed that file there. Uh, hmm, okay. I do like extra sleep, Shalan. He feels much more awake and ready for the day. Ready for the night, even. Um... Certainly a lot more than three hours sleep Shalom has. So is that my new brick PSU the other day? Uh, but at least you're... Oh, okay. Uh, I was imagining about another shot. Oh, painful. Painful, painful. Um, it's it's worth getting an old uh, C64 and taking the um, one that's broken that you don't need. Uh, and taking the power connector out of that and just sticking it in um, some of this. <clears throat> sticking it in a piece of proto board like that. Um, and then you can safely kind of run wires off it and, and then you've got test points on the board and then you don't have to worry about because uh, i i mean i've i've done the same luckily i didn't break a power supply but i've done the same when i've been trying to test the pins directly on the power supply uh, but also you can uh what you can do is you can attach a load over things so you get a proper um a proper reading of the of the uh the voltage drop across across the load um But yeah, just 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 stick a stick an old connector in them, and then you can just you can just push them into it. Uh, oh, well done, Mister G. Cool world. Oh, that's the that's a really weird game, that isn't it? Yeah, if you get like a high ampage um, 
a resistor as well. You can uh, quite a high resistor as well. You can put it across and treat it as a load kind of. Um, and then you can actually, because the other thing as well is, uh, especially on more modern design power supplies, is you might not always get the right reading out of the power supply unless there's a proper load on it. Anyway. All right, let's have a look. So uh, hopefully now the breakpoints are in the right place. So, hey, McGeezer, welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, you catch me in the middle of trying to play two players at the same time and getting completely muddled up with which player is with here. Okay. Oh, I should probably pick the... Oh, shit. Uh, oh, crap. Okay. Can I jump over the door? There we go. Actually, I don't know what happens if nobody picks the crown up, so it's an interesting one. Okay, so stage one, fine. Stage two, fine. Stage three, fine. Stage four. So that looked okay. Oh, that just looked okay. That's annoying. Okay, I need to get player one having the crown. I think that's the best way to do this. It seems if there's already points there that it causes a problem. Let's investigate. No one pick up the crown. Yeah, I should have done that. Uh, you bought a converter cable to use on my C128. Uh, one PSC for it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. So I actually have... Um, uh, a, a converter cable for my Spectrum 128 that I can plug in um, a C64 power supply into and then it will convert it for uh, a, a Spectrum 128, which makes me feel really good when I do that. Um, right, okay, so I want player one to have the crown and I want player one to go through the door first. And then we'll do a test where no nobody picks the crown up or, or the crown is lost first. So should the one with more score get the crown if unpicked? Yes. It, regardless of whether you go through the door with the crown, um whoever has the most points will will get the crown awarded at the next uh on the next level. Okay, so stage one. Fine, that went up great. The crown dropped off. Stage two, this guy's going to get all the points. Yeah, Spectrum does have a weird... The Spectrum 48 with the negative center is really odd. Um, and I bet there are so many people that have blown up Spectrums by just buying a uh, power supply online and accidentally getting one with positive um, center instead. Which is the common... Which is like the standard, really. Um, Okay, so let's have a look. So this this stage. So what I want to see now is when I do this, how far this player goes up, does it drop down straight away? No. Okay, so you see how close they are now. Very, very close. Um, oh, actually, actually, that looks weird. Because that player looks to be ahead. And yet he's not in the points. And then it corrects. Ah, uh, okay, something weird going on here. Hmm. And it all happened in that stage. It didn't happen. Oh, no, it did happen at that stage. It happened afterwards. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, C5 is kind of cool. <laughs> C5 just seemed like a death trap. I mean, great for kind of running around your, your kind of, you know, suburban neighborhood in the middle of the country somewhere, but I couldn't imagine driving through London with all the buses and trucks and stuff. That would just be a nightmare. Oh, I may have to, um, I may have to, um, I looked, oh, these look nice, actually. 
I like a bit of a... Uh... Oh, that's cool. That is very cool. You lucky, lucky man. Very cool. Don't ever get rid of that. On the buses becomes under the buses. Yeah, but in the country, people can see you. You're not in a. You're not in just a huge mess of traffic. Um, I mean, anybody who's been through London traffic, and I don't even drive, and I know it's bad, but anybody who's been through kind of central London traffic will know what I mean. It's just how people don't die on a daily basis it just in that one spot where i work is just beyond me um yeah in the country they're all drunk driving yeah um okay i'm a bit worried why so two things i noticed were wrong with this first of all there's the the error that happens afterwards um there's there's some kind of correction that goes on i'm not entirely sure what's going on there uh, but secondly, the, the points were at different levels, but the, the bars were pretty much on, on the spot. So, yeah, Russia's quite bad, actually. Yeah, I, so I've not been to Moscow, but I've been to St. Petersburg, and that was that was quite bad because the roads are really wide there, um, but nobody seems to follow any kind of rule set. So it's, uh, it's a little bit crazy. Um the actually the most the most scary um place i've been for traffic was indonesia because uh, it's like um it's moped crazy there uh, bali in particular um and so you know everybody and their family are on mopeds and when i be when i say everybody and their family i mean on a single moped so you'll get you'll get um, a little boy driving a moped with his grandma and his uncle on the back on a tiny little moped um and the roads are really thin and windy and there's very little in the way of kind of road markings and stuff so what the cars have to do so whenever they go around a corner you have to beep as you go around corners so you can let people know you're coming around and it's just it was kind of terrifying in places um yeah very interesting uh d -d 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 Loudest horn has the right of way, yeah. Yeah, Moscow. Yeah, Moscow. Yeah, I, that's what I remember about St. Petersburg is that the roads are really, really wide. But even though they're really wide, people are still all over the show in the road. Like they're not keeping to their lanes, they're all over the place. Um, and it just looked scary as hell. Um, okay, I'm a, a bit worried about this now because I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. So with, with two issues we need to solve. First of all, why is that um, why is that second value uh, the the that second kind of stage of correction happening? Um, and secondly, why yeah, I'm looking in the wrong file. Uh, why do the bars not match up in height? Which is a very worrying thing because they should be matching up in height. Um, so I'm wondering about this stage increment here. Um, so stage increments is multiples um, that that things count up in, and that means that the 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 first one, the player has the crown, and the player exit um, count up in multiples of a uh, thousand, four times two fifty. Um, but that's not what I'm seeing on the bar at all, which is what is worrying me here. Um, and I need to know why that is the case. So last stage is this bit here. Um, so how does it know when it's finished? Let's have a look at that. So bonus character's original plus two. Okay. Okay, so it just counts up these values until it reaches five. Which would imply adding five thousand. So let's check the crown stage because maybe the crown stage is wrong here. So the crown stage should be the same, but ten. Um, because maybe it's the crown stage that's wrong here. 
for a bit of a bit of uh was it humper you called it i forgot what you called it now but the rage meter is much higher <laughs> yeah uh humper yeah Okay, um, we definitely have the right number of ticks here, 10. Why is that not translated? Maybe the, maybe the increment is just wrong here. Maybe, maybe this is failing for some reason. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in here and just make sure that these, this Y value is correct here and make sure it's correct in the last stage as well. Uh, oh wait, hang on. Come on, stage. Okay, so basically at yes, at this stage here. So I need to make sure these values are two and three. So it will be uh, three first and then two. Shockingly, I think the 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 most kind of I wouldn't say peaceful, but um, the the safest feeling traffic um, for me was America. Um, I just feel like they they pay a lot of attention to uh, uh, road safety, and I mean, I mean it might just be the the locations I've been to, but it definitely felt a lot safer than most. Um, Uh, okay, why is comeback with zero for some reason? Yeah, you do drive on the wrong side. I mean, that that is a problem. But um, what, what I found with, with America is because you've got this thing against just crossing the road anywhere, you have loads and loads and loads of uh, crossings. So there's always pedestrian crossings somewhere. There are some places I found um, where it felt really kind of a bit dodgy to cross the road so like um one of the things i've I've found very strange uh with america is that um i need to remember which way this is uh turning right so you can turn right on a red light um uh, which i found kind of tricky to get used to at first um so when i was wait if i was crossing a road near like a an intersection uh, my instinct was not to check to the left. It was to check the lights. It was to check what the lights were on, and you can't do that in America. You have to kind of, uh, you have to, you have to keep an eye on what's coming from the right hand side because cars can turn right on red lights, and that's um, that's very unusual. However, at the time, um, one time we were in uh, Orlando when I was um, with my kids, uh, my wife, my wife was driving. Um, and anybody who knows Florida will know that the storms in, um, can you, ex can you discuss how you show your breaking into vice? Yeah, we'll do in a second. Um, anybody who knows Florida that knows in the middle of, um, I think it was August, July or August, that they have crazy, crazy thunderstorms. Um, and driving down one of the highways when a thunderstorm came on was one of the scariest experiences I've ever, ever been in, in traffic. So, uh, they have downsides as well. Okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, just to answer McGee's question, so um, breakpoints. So in uh, Kick Assembly, you can add, um, let me find it in here. What is that? So, oh, because the GPD's turned on, that's why. Um, find a spot where I put it. There we go. So you can add this command dot break. And what that will do is it will, when it gets to this point in the code, um, it will trigger a breakpoint and then drop into the uh, the the vice debugger, uh, uh, the vice monitor, basically, and show you. Uh, so in here, that means whenever we go into the bonus uh, and we're counting up. So at the moment, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to count up. Um, 
uh, well, I'm trying to look at the values that uh, that imply which player has uh, a certain thing. So it either has the crown or has won the race. Uh, so the race being the, the race to the door here. Um, I always want player one to go through first. Uh, and what I'm looking at is in particular which uh, which Y index is is this pointed to. So uh, the first break is probably uh, is it this one now? Exit bonus? No. Crown stage is this one here. So the break point that I've triggered is this here. Uh, so I want to know what my stage increment is here. Uh, and it's saying that y is zero. So that's telling me that I'm pointing to a stage increment, uh, the first stage increment in the list, uh, which if I find it in here somewhere, can't find it now. Here we go. Uh, so it's pointing to this one here, which is correct. This is, this is what I would expect. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to let this run through and hopefully when it's finished and the next set of breaks happen, uh, it'll be pointing to this one, which should show 03. And that's going to confirm that those uh, values are correct. So it's saying, so I know it's really hard for you guys to see because I can't make the um, thing any bigger. I do apologize that. Oh, what's this? Oh. Well, I know, I know what kind of game it is. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Oh, fair enough. Oh, who's going to get this one? Oh, I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. But I don't know the full name. I don't know the full name. Or maybe it is just... Because I think this was the first one in a very long-running series. It's just called John Madden Football. Yeah. All right. I would have said John Madden. I would have got it wrong, but... I think there was the this was the very first one. Um, oh, a bit of Lombarda. Very good. Okay, so it's saying the Y is zero, so it's picking the offset for stage increment of four, which is going to count up in thousands. And you can see there we're counting up in thousands, so that's fine. Uh, let that count all the way up. Right. Now it's going to go through the rest of the bonus bits, and then it's going to break again at the other uh, count. So we should also be a thousand. Um, but it's showing Y as 1, which is interesting. It should not have broken at this point. Um, and again, it's showing Y as 1. Now it's showing Y as 3. Interesting. So we've, we've landed on that break point twice when we maybe shouldn't have done. Um, but this is indeed counting up in thousands. But you can see here it's now gone to y is 2, which has caused an extra. Okay, so I think we're kind of on the right lines here. Um, let's check where our breakpoints happen. I, I, you know, I knew at some point the five 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 was going to happen. It isn't abandoned. It isn't abandoned. It has been about two years since I touched it, but um, I will be picking up again as soon as this game is finished. Um, and I'm hoping I can get a few people on board to help me out with the graphics and the sound, uh, and really get this game off to a a, a flying start. Uh, there's a lot I want to refactor in it, and there's a few design decisions that I made early on which I want to change. Um, for instance, uh, the original version that I was coding had no two-player support. Uh, and in doing this game, I've realized that actually two-player is, is is a very important thing. So I, I kind of want to change it for that. But that's going to need some sprite redesign, which is why I'm hoping I can get some uh, some people on board to help me. Because at the moment, the, the player sprite is three sprites. Um, it's the player, the umbrella, and the elements that, that swing around above the umbrella. So I'm hoping to kind of reduce that to two. Uh, but I am going to need somebody with with a bit more skill than than I have to to help me do that. So, uh, but anyway, we'll talk about that when we get round to it, which we will do soon. So, 
Okay, so a few things of interest here. All of these breakpoints happen at the uh, same point, I think. Uh, actually, no, this one didn't. So there's a couple that happened towards the end. Um, oh, no, that's right, because that's another... This one here, for instance, this happened... Um, this happened at this point, but it had the wrong number in it. Uh, it happened it happened here, but y had the wrong value here for some reason, uh, which makes me think that the bonus stage was not the bonus stage it was supposed to be on, um, uh, which is somewhat worrying. Um, and then the other one, the other break point was up here somewhere. What was it? God, I've got so much code in here. It's kind of crazy to follow now. Well, let's go. Let's go through a few things, right? So, if the bonus stage is four, um, then we've we're finished, and we can we can jump to here. So, I'm going to change this to not a war, uh, not to branch if not equal, but branch if less. Because uh, that's going to make sure that if this is above four, it's it's still going to work. Um, so then, if the bonus stage is uh, indeed kind of zero, one, two, or three, in other words, these four stages here, uh, then we're going to set the string up based on this up here. Which is what this is doing, and then we do some extra checking here. So we check if we're on the last stage, we jump to. So we check specifically if we're on bonus stage three. Um, uh, hang on, if we're on the last stage, we will skip the whole thing if one player... Okay, right, so we have to know that we're on... Uh, so, so there would be no crown award at this point. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I just loading the wrong value in here? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Damn it. I just skipped all the way ahead now. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, Andy, I do use delivery. I never use Just Eat anymore. Sorry about that. And yeah, for pizzas, it'll be Domino's. <laughs> so I'm with Foro on this one. Oh my god, what's this? Combat school. I remember this. Does anybody know the North American name for combat school? I'm sure somebody does. Combat school was the European version. Does anybody know what the North American one was called? <laughs> I haven't abandoned it. Stop saying that. All uh, right. Okay. So I'm, I'm getting distracted. Let's let's focus on this. Okay. So. So for some reason, the break point that happens in the middle of here. Is picking up the wrong value in y for some reason. Uh, now that y comes from here, which is the bonus stage, uh, and you should only be able to get to this stage here uh, through these jumps here. Uh, so if bonus stage is three uh, or zero, then you jump to specific stages. Otherwise, you come into this routine here. So I need to just make sure that this routine actually finishes uh, properly. Uh, or whether it just drops through. I'm hoping it doesn't drop through. I'm hoping it finishes correctly. Yeah, it does seem to finish correctly. It jumps to exit here. Okay, so we've not got a problem with the with the crown uh, stage. So let's take the breakpoint out of that. Just have a look what's going on in here. Bootcamp, yes, indeed.
I always wondered why they did that as well, because um, as far as I know, um, well, maybe maybe it wasn't actually. Maybe it was an American-made game first. Hence, because if it was made in Europe and it was called Combat Skill, that surely makes sense in America still, right? Uh, but if it was, um, was this? Oh, actually, Eldritch beat you to that. Sorry, Eldritch. <laughs> I missed it as well as because because you put the at Shallon on it so. Um, but I guess if it was made in America first and they call it boot camp, that would have meant wouldn't have meant very much, um, over here. But yeah, if I would have thought if it was European, there would have been no need to change it, or maybe they just felt that it marketed better as as boot camp, um, because they had a proper word for it, whereas we don't really have a a word for it here. Um, I am I am struggling to think about this properly and logically. Um, okay, it's only the last stage that's the problem, right? It's only this last stage, so which is this bit here? No, not this bit. This bit. It's called, actually called last stage. And this is where the bonus stage is loaded in. Let me. Let, I, I want to check. Do we ever jump into last stage when the bonus stage is anything other than three? It should only ever be three, and nothing else. But see, it looks here like we get into this routine sometimes with another number. So I just want to make sure that's not the case. I also want to check if I've just got any other breaks in here. Okay, so I do have a break there. So get rid of that one. Okay, so the only break now is in the last stage section. So jump more wine, yeah. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at this. Um, I I kind of want to get the the other points counting up so we can, uh, we can kind of mess around with it a little bit more. So, how much does it cost? Best thing about Domino's, I always order around six p.m. and they do them in thirty minutes and give you a coupon to save like ten dollars that I used to order the next pizza. That's kind of cool. Five night five dollars ninety three for a pizza. That's pretty awesome, and a tip as well. What do you normally tip for something like? Or you tip like two dollars or something like that. I mean, five ninety three. I'd give him ten dollars and say keep the change. Yeah, pizza is stupid expensive in this country. And Domino's here are really sneaky with the... Oh, why didn't... Oh, right. So this is what happens if nobody gets the crown. Well, because nobody got the crown, nobody got the exit win. So we, we have to make sure... Okay. Okay, that's that's an interesting bug. So what's happening here um, is there is a check to see if we're in one player mode. And the way it's checking that is to check if a player had the crown. Um, and so the exit doesn't work here. So what we actually need to be checking is, all right, so there's a few things we need to do here. Yeah, see, we're loading this value here, uh, whereas what we probably should be loading here uh, is player, not players, active, is it? Active, there we go. Uh, and comparing that to 03. Uh, and if that's equal to 03, we can skip ahead. Let's try that. <laughs> thanks cheers thanks for the bits uh and thanks for the bits haze as well i didn't i, I was too busy kind of i was too busy 
complaining about the uh, the parasol stars thing to actually thank you for the for bits, but thank you for the bits, dude. Uh All right, um, let's try that out now. So I'm going to try again with not picking the, the crown up this time. Uh, well, I know straight away I picked the crown up, so I need to lose the crown. That's fine, I'll lose it here. Uh, and then go this way, right. So there is a bug with the players um, dying if a, an enemy walks off the screen there. That's one we'll sort out at some point. Thanks for the bits, Just80. Appreciate it, dude. No TTS as well. That's what I like. Nice and, nice and simple. Okay, so no crown awarded, so that's fine. We do get a break at this point. It's saying that... Uh, Oh, it's saying Y is FF. Why is Y FF at that point? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Oh, because it's not Y we're looking at here. It is X we're looking at. Uh, thank you for the follow, Sharain, and welcome to the stream. X is three, so that's correct. Okay. Okay, and we see some values being added on here. They're on a timer, so they don't get added every frame. I missed that. Did that actually... Did that go down again? Oh, damn it. All right, I'm, I'm going to take a quick break because I really do need to go to the toilet. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take my little smoke break as well now. And I'll be back in five minutes, guys, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. It's winding me up, but we'll get to the bottom of this. Be right back, guys. Now, I need to look one up, um, because I saw Deliverance come up, and I think somebody put Deliverance Stormlord, and I'm not sure, but I might have to add that as a... Deliverance Stormlord 2, no, not the first one. Hmm. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Do you think it should be Deliverance Stormlord? Or it should ac accept either Deliverance or Stormlord or a, a combination? Yeah, you won with Deliverance, but I noticed somebody typed Deliverance Stormlord as well. <clears throat> Oh, he says, hang up, there's a new setting in Streamlabs called Spam Security, which you have to turn off. <laughs> Thanks for the bit, Spooky64, appreciate it, and thank you for the follow, Mooncat45 as well, I missed that because I was away. Okay, I will add uh, Deliverance Stormlord into the... Uh, but I'll do that now while I while I'm thinking about it. So let me just open the sort. Where is it now? It's in this, isn't it? It's in here. And then I have a long list. It's this one here. No, not that one. Uh, I think it's that one. Yeah. Okay. Right, so yeah. So it's just deliverance here at the moment. Uh, so I will add, um, oops, also accepts Deliverance Stormlord or just Stormlord. So you know in future, have I spelled that right? Deliverance Storm, yeah, okay, so they're the three acceptable values. <laughs> So that's that's ready for next time. Yeah, if if that's what won it this time, then you you keep the points. There's, I'm not going to take points away from anybody, but um, 
I do want to improve the quiz if there is one that um, also had Airwolf as a fourth value. Everything should just have Airwolf or or action action biker. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, right. Let's uh, let's crack on with this. I think what I'm going to do actually is um, I'm going to just put this to one side for now because I'm not making very good progress on finding where this issue is, um, and worry about the other the other two sections first. We've got the first section working. Um, I want to do the counts ups now. So enemies killed. So um, basically, when we start a level, um, we need to count in the players how many enemies they've killed. So. This might actually already be a counter that we've put in here. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it doesn't look like it is looking at this. Uh, eat count. Ah, no, there is an eat count here. There is indeed an eat count. So we can use these values here already. Uh, oh, a listen. What was the listen? Uh, oh, thanks for the host, Fistmaster. And thanks for the host, Andy, as well. Uh, what was the listen for? Uh, what you have seventy percent of letters in the name correct? Will it be correct? No, you you have to get. So just to to go back to this again. Thank you for the follow, uh, East Donko Seven. Uh, just to go back to this list again. So you have to get these characters. One of these things correct. So this is the image that it loads in. Um, and so you can see here. Uh, Denaris is also called Catechist, depending on where you go. So you can have Denaris brackets Catechist or Denaris Catechist. I should probably put Catechist brackets Denaris in here as well. The first one is the one that gets shown uh, when you, when you've won or or not won, and the other ones are uh, other values. But what it does, it strips out all spaces um, and and all other punctuation. So you could actually do uh, Denaris like that, and it would accept that with the space in it. Uh, likewise, you could put um, a hyphen in there or something like that, and it would accept that as well. Uh, the other thing it does as well is it converts that to that and that to that. So last ninja two and three, for instance, you could use uh, you could use uh, the number two or you could use two eyes. Um, it tries to make it fairly fair, but you still have to be able to you you still have to spell it correctly. Um, so, for instance, Deliverance Stormlord, you could put that colon in the middle and it would just ignore the colon. You could also do Deliverance Stormlord all one word and it would accept that. So it doesn't convert two to remix though. No, because that is a different, it is slightly different. The hood is different. Um, I really felt for you when you did that as well, Hayes, because I thought Hayes is going to get this. And then I realized that when I saw the hood, I realized it was the remix one. And I thought, shit, yeah, he might actually make a mistake here. And you did as well. You fell into the trap. Um, okay, so play eat counts. So we, we have some play eat counts. I need to make sure these are being reset in here, uh, which they don't seem to be being. Uh, is this the initialize? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to store that in here as well, because otherwise when we go into the next screen, these are going to count up incorrectly so i need to make sure we might there's probably loads of these we need to reset but i'm going to do these ones while i remember um and then in the bonus when the bonus starts we need to fill these values in so there's three values we need to fill in here now so the first one is uh the the total between both players and then the we have to fill in the individual players so i'm going to do this like this so i'm going to leave that one down there for now so this is this is the one that's buggy at the moment we'll figure out why that is soon but what we can do is we can use player player one eat count and that needs to be stored in here so bonus player one counters plus zero and then we do the same with player two eat count <laughs> And now the accumulator contains the player two value, so we can just add uh, the player one value to that and store that at bonus counts as plus zero. Where's that gone? There it is. Right, so that should give us the right number of enemies now instead of the values that we've got in there currently. So I'm actually going to 
Uh, actually, I don't need to clear them. It's fine. So let's see if this works. Um, so what we're looking for now is it to know exactly how many players we've eaten. Um, so I'm going to do all the eating on player two first, just to test. Uh, so, oh, shit. My ability to, to multitask is absolutely terrible when it comes to playing two players. So player one has the crown, but player two ate the enemies. So. Okay, yeah, and indeed we saw player two get two here. Um, we'll see if the points are correct here. So 10,000 for this player, 500, and then 16 times this, four, so 4,500 is correct. But let's have a look at this, this player one exit thing, because two, three, four. I'm going to check this every time we go in. Um, Oh, he was right that time. He didn't break that time. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to remove the breakpoint there, but it seems like the enemies killed is working. So I'm going to remove that breakpoint, and we'll do a test with player one eating all the enemies. Um, and then we'll do one where we split it between the two, and then we'll work on the tagged areas. So the tagged areas should be pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start another quiz, because I like watching you guys guess these. So there you go. Give you guys something to do while I'm fiddling around, making a mess of things. Uh, let's face that player that way, that player that way. There we go. Right, I'm going to eat with player one this time. What is that? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you baited everybody then, Godstar Hero. I like it. Oh, don't say it. <laughs> don't, don't say it. Thanks for the follow, Helgilax. Welcome to the stream, dude. <laughs> oh, interesting. Ah, oh, I didn't know that, actually. Okay, let me just check player two. Yeah, so play two got the points there, 10,500. Okay. So Contra and Grizor need to... Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, so this is the problem I've done. Uh, in fact, I think I've got Contra in here as well, actually. I have, so, so I need to make both of these. And I need to find the Grizor and make it Contra as well. Okay, so that means there's two screenshots for this. Okay, that's done. That's what you get for manually putting these in. I, I I put 460 or so of these screenshots in, and I've tried my best to go through and uh, and and do that. But um, where's my money? You you got you got a bonus last time. <laughs> Okay, so that seemed to work. Now let's do one for each player. And then we can do the tag there. So the tag there is, is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to have to actually go through the screen um, and, and check for certain areas. Uh, thanks for the resub, Paradox NJ. I appreciate it, dude. Okay, let's get this guy. Let's get that. Okay, cool. Right, so now we should have one, one area each. So I need to make sure that this counts up correctly. So, yep, yeah, two fifty-two. Yeah, cool. So that worked right. And actually, it seems to be working with the, uh, the count up now for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, it could be the branch of carry clear that I did before instead of the branch if not equal. I'm not sure, but um, seems to be fine. Uh, I just loaded up my game on iPad, a two-year-old version, and compared it with the latest in the browser. And the same code is running 20% for, twenty frames per cent faster in browser now than the native compiled app uh, in two years old. Yeah, Cordova is it, Cordova is really bad. So so Cordova, um, as you probably know yourself, um, 
embeds this Safari web view, uh, but it also adds a shitload of overhead as well. So you're you're almost always going to have a better experience um, with a native browser rather than a native app that embeds a browser. Um, it's just an unfortunate. It's another one of these. Um, it's another one of the problems that Apple has got with the difference between Safari Web View and Safari Browser. So Safari Web View is kind of Safari, but not quite. So Safari Web View is a cut down version of Safari that they allow anybody to use. It's what is in Chrome when you download Chrome for Apple. It's what's in there. So um, this strict tactic. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few plugins you can get as well, or some patches you can get that. Um, that change things so uh, and make things better um but yeah we, i i mean in my previous role um we had a native app which embedded a lot of our websites and we used to get so what we did with uh, a lot of the games that we so we did a lot of web games um in fact it was almost exclusively web games uh, but what we tend to do is we would tend to detect the um browser the device and we'd trim things down or use different kind of scaled assets and stuff depending on the device and what that meant that the developers could do is they could push each device to its limits and they could kind of get the best uh the best look out of a game by loading you know almost fill in video memory uh but not quite um but the problem with that is the moment you put it in the native app and it uses a web view the web view has a lot less memory to deal with so it starts doing a lot more page swapping uh, texture memory is a lot more limited so what you're probably seeing in the in the native app is you're probably running out of texture page memory and what's happening is it's basically swapping in a lot more than it should be doing it's doing a lot more um page swapping than if it was just in the native browser um rather than a, a, a the web view in a native app i'm glad i don't have to deal with that anymore it's really good use a single texture yeah, but I'm I'm guessing. Do you use something like Pixie or Phaser or something like that? Because uh, what Pixie and Phaser do is they will they will kind of uh, work out based on the texture limits of the device how it needs to split those things up. So even though you use a single sheet, it can still it can still split it up differently and send it to the the the, the uh, GPU in chunks instead. Um, and it might not be the case. It might just be the overhead of Cordova as well. But it is quite common for native apps to kind of do native apps using WebView to do that sort of thing. Yeah, the fragmentation of, of mobile browsers is is horrific. And it, it's this thing we thought we'd got rid of with desktop browsers. Uh, but it's just got worse, really, since, since the uh, mobile browsers have become the kind of primary way that people... Um, consume web content now it's kind of got a lot worse especially when you've got players like samsung and apple who are, are, are massively pushing for non-standard kind of versions of the browsers um it's a, it's a shame really because if they all work together i'm sure they could come up with something that suits them all that's as fast as the fastest browser they've got now but but works on everything and is compatible with everything um, but they don't like to do that Apple don't like to give up control, uh, and Samsung have basically kind of followed Apple's suit there. It's one thing I do think uh, Google has got going for it is their 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 browser is kind of open standards and it's open source and stuff, so you can kind of you can mess around with it and stuff. So, um, the Samsung browser is getting crazy fast. You wouldn't say that if you run you ran some of the shit I've run in the browser in the Samsung browser. It might be a fast browser for, for normal web browsing, but for anything that's kind of graphical intensive, it's horrible. Same with Safari as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, they don't want you to make games for the browser. They want you to make games for the, their respective stores um, so they can get a cut of it. They don't want you to do things for free. Um... Okay, um, cool. Right, so I think this is kind of working now. We've just got one last thing that we need to count, uh, and then we'll do some testing around it. So what I want to count now is the, the colored areas on the ground. So this is going to be a little bit different. So what this means is as soon as the level is finished, the first thing we need to do is we need to, we need to scan through the entire screen and we need to count the colorable areas and whether or not they're assigned to player one or to player two. So we'll start by making some, uh, some 
properties in here that we're going to use to count up. Um, so we'll call this player one uh, tagged. Is they called tagged areas? Um, and player two tagged. Now we can't just count these up as we play through the game because obviously players are going to be overriding areas and you know it's going to be very kind of inefficient to try and keep a track of that on the fly all we care about is the very very last stage so as soon as the as soon as the uh, switch has been pressed uh, and the door is, has been activated and we go through the door then we can start counting these so first of all we need to reset these we need to make sure that these values stay uh, put back to zero so we can do that here when we start um, restoring everything uh, resetting everything ocean loader I think the Ocean Loaders are probably the most memorable tunes for me on the C64, with the exception of a couple of games like Breaches and, and Turrican, the games that I would play an awful lot of, or Iridium, for instance. But um, very, very close behind them is are probably the Ocean Loaders, because I just they just stick in my mind so much. Uh, mainly because every time you got a decent game on tape, it probably had Ocean Loader. <laughs> on it so you kind of got used to hearing it yeah ocean loader 4 is pretty good i like ocean loader 2 though as well okay so player tag so now we need to work out when do we need to do this so for to do this we need to work out when um the bonus becomes initialized now i'm pretty sure we can't just do it in the start because i don't think at the start that we that the screen is still there i think it's hidden uh by that point so i'm going to test it i'm just going to put a breakpoint in the bonus but i think it'll be too late at this point anyway yeah so i'll stick a breakpoint here but i think it'll be too late at this point i think it's more likely going to be just before the transaction Ocean loaders, one of the ocean loaders, well, in fact, loaders in general are uh, C64 loaders, the stuff that I hear a lot, are the sort of pieces of music that now and again a, a, a bar of that music will pop into my head and I'll be like, where is that from? And I'm not even thinking of computer games, I'm just thinking of the notes of something. Uh, and more often than not, it ends up being a loader <laughs> for C64 rather than some pop tune or something like that. Yeah, see, so it's too late at that point. So it needs to. It needs to happen before that okay so let's have a look so let's get rid of it from there um initialize transition possibly could be this um let's put a breakpoint in here because this might be a good place because this is only going to get called once as well when i hear sids now just reminds me shall on the stream <laughs> Oh no, don't let me destroy your childhood memories. What's the best Mastertronic game? Ooh. Um, uh, oh, easy. Invader Load. <laughs> the loader for, for Master, Mastertronic, some Mastertronic games. Uh, just because of the music. <laughs> no, one man and his droid music. Good night, Codrasaur. Thanks for joining, dude. Cool. Right, so this is perfect. This is the perfect spot now. So, And it's in bonus, which is good. Um, so actually, rather than store this in the player, rather than store this here, what I think we can do is just write it directly into those values. So we have... Um, I just need to make sure that it doesn't get called more than once. I don't think it will. It doesn't. Okay, good. So in that case, we can jump to uh, count tagged areas here. Oh, that stopped very suddenly. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> good answer, Andy Magic Knight. Good answer. 
problem is I don't remember. I don't remember many of the game's labels, um, with the exception of a couple like Rainbow Arts. I always remember um, a lot of Ocean. I remember a lot of Thalamus. I remember a lot of. But beyond that, I I, I struggle sometimes to kind of tag uh, a game to its its label. So. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm not sure. Mastertronic wise, but Hayes did a Hayes did a whole Mastertronic month. I think did he do Mastertronic March or something like that? Um, where you played loads and loads of Mastertronic games. Um, and remember as well, Mastertronic um had Mastertronic and they had Mad as well, which was some other um. Mastertronic May, that's it. I knew you, I knew you had done something. I knew it was months based. So I want to put this next to where the actual values are. Where am I here? Okay, I'm here. So you're gonna do you should do another one of those. I'm trying to think what would you uh uh Try to think of months that match now. Hmm. Ocean October. Yeah, Aquafin said it at the same time. Amazing. Yeah, Ocean October. You got to do it. Oh, yeah, Virgin Mastertronic as well. Yes, and they did Golden Axe. And Gold I really liked Golden Axe. Golden Axe was amazing. Yeah, I I would probably have to go with Golden Axe in that case. Uh, okay, I'm not going to put it up there. I'm going to. Oh, I'll put it here and I'll move it down when I'm finished. So basically, we're going to reset the values in here and here, and then we're going to start counting them up. So let's start by resetting those values. We need to set those to zero, and we're going to store that at bonus play one counters plus one. Bonus play at two counters plus plus one. We don't need to reset this one because we can just add that value up when we're finished. And now we need to go through the screen. So, um, so the trick to this is going to be we hmm, I'm trying to think how best to do this now. Okay, what we'll do is we'll use uh, we'll use a row and column counter. Um, don't think I've got anything to sell for that already. Um, but I feel confident that we can use. Uh, these temp values here. So I'm going to create some aliases for these. I'm going to call one row column. So what we're going to do is we've, we're going to basically loop through columns and rows. So row is going to be the outer loop and column is going to be our inner loop. which means we need to set some values. So we're going to start with uh, setting the rows here. So we are going to have, how many rows is it actually? It's, it's 20, 22 rows. I think that is my favorite TTS. Thank you very much for the uh, for the bits, Hayes. Um, I just love the way that she can't pronounce la 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 without five different ways of doing it. Oh, I know this game. I really liked this game. I, I think I made Hitch play this once uh, and he wasn't into it. Uh, but I really like this game. I'd be surprised if anybody gets this because it's quite, quite, um, it's quite a rare one. No, it's not Starion. Thank fuck IRC messages are limited to 512 characters. No, I'll tell you what it is. It's Star Race.
and you know when to get that. But I'm completely fine with that. <laughs> okay, so and then the other thing we're going to need is uh, a, a, we're going need to need to grab a value. So we need to grab a value from the screen. Then we need to look it up in a table, uh, and then we need to grab the color that's currently in that position. So we need to have two values here. Now I'm going to use self mod for this because I'm being a little bit lazy and I don't want to. Uh, actually, no, maybe I could use. Oh no, I'll use vectors. All right. So we'll have screen fetch equals vector one and uh, color fetch vector two. So I can't remember where our screen is. I think our screen's at. Uh, Hmm, let's have a look. I think it's at C000. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, so let's store these zeros at uh, color fetch plus zero and screen fetch plus zero. And then I'm going to put C0 at screen fetch plus one. And D8 at screen fetch at uh, color fetch plus one. So, what we need to do here is we need to look up um, would I be better off embedding my game in my own custom web view iOS app performance wise? Uh, yes, if you just do something in Swift or, or whatever which in, imports the, um, the web view, you should be able to do it because I think. I, I haven't done Swift very much at all, but I'm pretty sure you can turn certain features on and off on the web view as well. So you can just enable the things that you, you're interested in um, and leave everything else turned off as well. The problem with Cordova is it just adds so many hooks into the web view that you, you just lose tons and tons of performance. Um, but with Swift, you should be able to just create a very, very basic web view app that just loads in your thing. Now, bear in mind that Apple do have um do have new requirements that have come in in the past six months or so um that a game um a game should not load html or or javascript unless it's embedded into the app itself i'm sure that's what you would do anyway but just bear in mind that you can't load that from an external source it has to be embedded in the package um otherwise they'll just they'll just reject it um <laughs> there was a Sid name that la 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 la. Apple is a little bit biased towards web view wrapping. Yeah, they're not. We had a lot of problems with that. Um, but as long as you, yeah, just read the guidelines carefully, and and you should be able to 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 be okay with it. Just make sure that there's no external calls um, from your JavaScript, and you should be all right. Because uh, what they will do is if you embed a JavaScript file into the package, they will examine the JavaScript and make sure that it's not doing anything they don't want it to do. So just make sure that it's a uh, secure JavaScript and you should be fine. Also, it kind of depends what reviewer you get as well. So we, we had stuff that would fail and then we'd change one line and send it back, um, knowing that we hadn't really made much of a change, but we just changed the checksum uh, and then it would pass because uh, a different reviewer. Uh, Kali Share, uh, thank you for the follow, dude. Uh, what about API calls? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure on that. I'm not sure on that. Um, you would have to, you would have to check with, um, through the documentation, but you can always, you can always submit it and see if it passes and then, um, and then make the changes if you need to. Um, bear in mind as well that Apple are, are kind of trying to push their Apple Arcade stuff as well. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure, but I think they've got things like high score and achievement APIs in there. So they may, might try and force you to use those. Um, but I don't know. I honestly don't know. So um, just give it a try. See what happens. The worst they can do, right, is say no and, and reject it. They're not going to ban you or anything. Uh, 
I think with us, they were more bothered because the stuff I was doing was gambling. So they 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 don't like gambling stuff on their platform at all. But as long as you follow the rules, they can't really reject it um, until they explicitly say no gambling on their platform. Um, but the fact that they have games with loot boxes and things like that means they can't really say no gambling because then those games would end up being banned everywhere. So that you have to kind of find ways around it. I'm sure a, a, a high score or achievement API is probably okay. Um, as long as it's just like a, a post or a get call, it's probably fine. Um, if you were trying to load in code from somewhere else, then I think it would be a problem. But I think a post or get call should be fine. Certainly there's tons and tons of apps that do that. So, um, But just bear in mind, they'll pay extra attention to you if you're wrapping something, um, if you're wrapping a web view in a, in a native app. so. Yeah, we do. We launch we launch the games in the browser as well. But you'd be surprised how many how many players um, want to use native apps as well. Um, so yeah, we do we do launch in browsers, um, but there is quite a significant portion of the player base that plays um, uh, on iOS and Android apps. So that's why we and, and all we're basically doing is wrapping our games. Um, so what we started doing was we'd wrap our lobby and we'd just submit that. And that was fine for a while, for about two years, that was absolutely fine. Uh, and then they started complaining because the lobby was loading in, loading in JavaScript externally. And then they would, uh, they would really kind of, uh, get angry with us and, and started rejecting it. So tangent. Yeah, I have gone off on a tangent anyway. Right. So we've got our screen fetch. We've got our color fetch location. So now what we're going to do, um, <clears throat> is we're going to loop through every single location on the screen. So I'm going to start by loading the Y with zero here. Uh, and we're going to check if it's a colorable location. So the way to do that is we're going to load our screen fetch, uh, comma Y. Then we're going to transfer that into the X register and we're going to load color. Okay, color. I don't know what this is called. Then. Char colors, okay. And then we're going to end that with utils dot colorable, I think. I need to go look that up. Collision colorable, okay. Bloody screen. There we go. Uh, and I need to put a skip in here. And skip. Okay, we'll deal with the skip in a minute. But <clears throat> so if this is equal to zero, then the item is not colorable when we can jump ahead. However, if it is colorable, then we need to do the next step, which is we need to grab our color fetch and we need to see what color is in that location. <laughs> oh. oh i didn't give you any tts what the hell <laughs> thanks for the bits Hayes. i'll I'll read it out instead uh for candy magic nights tangent it's very interesting thanks for the advice my game will only cost five i'm not going to read all the fives um yeah 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 no no worries um there, there's there's people that know um yeah maybe it's all the fuck and just 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 cancelled it after that. It won't swear. I think that's probably what it is. Can you do, can't just scan the RAM for the player colors? Other thing, yeah. Over, um, unfortunately, um, there are areas of the screen which may have that color. So, for instance, if you look at um, uh, so let me load the let me load the character center here. There are levels that have red and uh cyan bits in them as well so it's not as easy as just doing that unfortunately um which is why we have to do this uh oh my god where is it it's desktop isn't it there we go let's make a game oh god which one is it now is it i don't know which one it is i'm gonna go for that one it's not that one That's the one. Um, yeah, as you can see, we've got a little bit of cyan. 
uh, on here and that in here is this piece here which has a char color of cyan so you can't just you can't just do it like that unfortunately <laughs> no there, there's no minimum I, th I think you can do it with one bit i don't think you need 100 or maybe you do i'm not sure um i don't know what the default is whatever the default is i haven't changed it so um but yeah i think if you i think if you swear it um it obviously cancels it out anyway <clears throat> So yeah, at this point we know we've found a colorable area. So now what we need to do is we need to compare that to the player values. Now, obviously we're grabbing from, from color RAM. So we need to make sure we end with zero F. Otherwise this value will be unpredictable. The upper nibble will be unpredictable. Color RAM is four bits, not eight bits. <laughs> but here we go, we'll find out now. <laughs> thanks for the bits guys thanks for the bits Andy Magic Knight thanks for the bits Hayes and thanks for the bits Lesnar um, yeah TTS seems to be on a on its on its own kind of rules tonight for some reason getting through this wine very quickly it's very nice definitely recommend that it's one of the best Sauvignon Blancs I've had in a while um, Louis Philip Edwards uh, bin 17 whatever that means uh, Sauvignon Blanc. It's only a year old as well, and it tastes it tastes like a two or three year old at least. It's got a very dry taste to it. Oh, interesting. Um, I have no idea what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean, Chiz? <laughs> it, I'm guessing that's rude. I'm guessing you were testing it for rudeness. It means you've got nice tits. Thanks. <laughs> oh, did it, now, please tell me that, Hayes, you just knew that. And that's actually what it does say. Beautiful natural jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, amazing. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought now. Uh, oh, yeah, so color RAM is only four bits. So we need to make sure we end it because the, the upper four bits could return anything. Uh, generally, it will either be zero or F, but there's no guarantee it would be either of those anyway. So we need to end it with this to get the color. Um, now, this is going to return a color in the range from 8 to 15 because we're in multicolor mode. And our player colors are actually in the lower range. So what we also need to do is we need to subtract 8 from that value. All is Vernlich, Asagavernlich, und nichts ist für Schlimmes, Schlimmbezeien. I have no idea what that means. Alles ist Asagavernlich, und nichts ist für Schlimmbezeien. I don't even know if I pronounced it right, but um Well, as I said to Akmafin uh only yesterday, Hungarian and Finnish are from the same base, so uh, Ugo uh, uh I can't remember the name of the base, but yeah. Uh okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Just compare against the shifted color value. Yes, but what I need to do is compare this against... Um, where is it? I actually have player colors stored in here. And I don't want to... Because they're used throughout for coloring stuff. So I don't want to kind of mess around. Uh, too much of this but what i might do is is record these values before i start and do it that way um, so i don't have to do this every time player colors there we go 
Yeah, so I'm going to grab these values and I'm going to store. <laughs> thanks for the bit. Thanks for the bit, second Finn. Uh, and thanks for the bits as well, Fisma. So I was too busy trying to read the German. <laughs> Barely any code. And yes, yes, focus. Right. So Foray is right. Um, uh, well, he's right in that I probably shouldn't be doing this every frame. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, or every every iteration on here, is that just at the end of here, I'm going to put shifted colors. Uh, and I'm going to put two bytes in here as well. And then at the beginning here, I'm going to load. Uh, thank you for the bits, Doxter. I have no idea what that means. It looks like... Uh, I don't know. I am not sure what that is. Danish, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 there, there we go. <clears throat> Norwegian. Oh, yeah, I should have got that from the OG, actually. Okay, so this way I don't have to compare. Um, as as Fori says, I don't have to do this every time. I can just compare it against the shifted values here, uh, which should make things a bit easier. So if this is not equal, then it's player two, possibly player two. Uh, so I'm going to put P1 here, P2, and P done. Um, because it could it could also not be uh, player 2. So we have to compare shifted color there. Uh, and then in player 2, we have to compare shifted color plus 1 here. Uh, otherwise, jump to P done. And then here we can just increment um, this value here. Play one bonus counters plus one. Uh, and here, play a bonus counter plus two. Uh, and jump to P done here. So, what this is going to do is just going to make sure that if these colors are match the player color, then it's going to increment that player's value. So, oh, I missed that. What was the golf game? Who got it? I didn't hear anybody get that then. Oh, I missed what it was. Nobody got it. What was it? They should have said what it was. I didn't even hear the no the noise actually. Golf master. Okay. Oh, raid level up transmission. Time's out too fast, you know, I guess I can fix that now. Well, I can fix it for the next stream now. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the raid, Level Up Transmissions. Uh, welcome, everybody that's come along with uh, Level Up. Um, we're, we're currently, well, this, this is JavaScript, which I will uh, stop doing in a second. But we're doing, uh, I don't know, it should, take, it should take 10 seconds. I don't know why that took longer. Uh, okay. I might need to check that another time. Uh, we're working on a C64 game. Um, we're, we're down to the kind of last annoying 10% or so now. So everything is kind of lots and lots of time taken and not very much um, in terms of progress. Um, it isn't helped, of course, by the fact that I'm, I'm digressing an awful lot tonight. Um, but we, we are making some progress. We're just in the process of counting up some uh, values. Uh, so I'm going to... Just try and finish this routine. So, okay, uh, which is going to be here. What is this? The digression in drinking is what makes it fun, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. We are nearing the end of this first bottle of wine as well. We're going to open the, the red. In fact, I'm going to take the lid off just to let it air a little bit. 
Okay, uh, so we need to increase y here, and we need to compare this to 28. And if that's not equal, we go all the way back to column loop, and we repeat this until we've done one entire row. Um, so actually, column loop doesn't need to actually be set here, so we don't actually need this one. Um, so we can get rid of that. Don't need that, because we're using y for this. Um, so that's fine. When we finish the column, what we need to then do is we need to um, advance uh, a row. So first of all, we're going to uh, just increment or, or actually decrement uh, the value in row. Uh, and if that hits zero, that means we're finished and we can go to exit. Otherwise, we need to actually add the values to the row. So we'll do this by loading screen fetch plus zero. And the carry bit here. Add 28, which should not have gone onto two lines. Store that at screen fetch. Now, the interesting thing here is we can also store that at color fetch as well. No need to do this in two separate rows. Um, and the reason for that is because the screen and color RAM are going to have the same lower byte uh, no matter where you are. And then we can use this to do, we can check if the carry is still clear. If it is, then we don't need to do anything. Otherwise, we can just increment screen fetch plus one, increment color fetch plus one. Um, and that's, uh, I mean, it's probably not the most efficient, but it's, it's a fairly efficient way of doing this now. Um, and then here, we're going to jump to row loop. Thanks to the follow, Condros. Welcome to the stream, dude. Do you know what? I'm going to start another quiz as well. Just keep you guys busy. I like the quiz. I might, I might shorten it to 10 minutes because I'm enjoying, the, I'm enjoying the, uh, the quiz answers that you guys give now and again. So, Also, I like trying to guess myself. Yeah, interest. Oh, I think I know what this is. I think I know what it is. Yes, I do know what it is. Who's going to get this first? <laughs> you answered too quickly. <laughs> well done, Dr. Goggles. Well done. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so I think that's going to count all the values correctly now. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this, first of all, by just firing with one player. Um, in fact, I, I probably don't even need to launch two-player mode for this, but I will do anyway. Um, but I think this, I think this is just going to work. Oh, no, the final thing we need to do is we need to add the values together. And put them up here so before we exit we need to load um oh this is wrong as well that needs to be where two counts it's plus one there we go so we need to load that value and we need to add this value and store that at bonus counters plus one all right, there we go. That should give us the right value. So I'm going to just, try, oh, unknown symbol player colors. Oh, because I need player in there. Okay. Uh, column loop should have a minus on it. Yep. And this should be player. Players. I just think I'd know by now after doing this so many times. Uh, player, okay. Right, so um, I will launch two players just to see. Okay, so okay, player one has all the ground now, so I'm not going to do anything with player two. It's all just going to be player one. Uh, and then before we go, we're going to try and count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, we might have an issue with this. We might have to ignore the switch. Because uh, it's flashing right now. Um, I forgot the number I counted up to. God damn it, 3, 6, 9, 
11, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, so let's see if we get a, a value of 25 in the, uh, in the tagged areas. We did indeed get 25. It's pretty cool. Didn't get a crown award though, so that's one thing that we need to deal with. If the crown wasn't awarded here, then it doesn't get awarded at the end. So we need to fix that. Um, we might as well do that now while it's it's there, but it looks like it's counting these areas correctly, which is good. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is I'm just going to make sure that the crown does get awarded because uh, it looks like it's not being awarded um, if if that initial kind of if the crown isn't awarded if, if if you don't finish with the crown no crown gets awarded and that's wrong um so i need to make sure that that works uh, so let's jump to that who has high score compared to zero uh oh maybe this isn't being called in that case okay let's find out where that's being called Uh, okay, it should be being called. Players active. Thanks for the follow, a baby duck. Welcome to the stream, dude. Let's get some more wine in me. I wonder if it's because the crown was not set up. Um, and the crown actually has been awarded, but we're not seeing it. Um, so let's just double check that that's, that can actually be set up correctly. So because I'm, yes, actually, I bet that's it. Because if the player doesn't start with the crown, then the crown doesn't end up where it should be. Um, so initialize crown sprite. So the crown does get initialized. But it comes to here. No crown. Okay. So I'm actually going to move that now to here. So the crown does get turned on, uh, but I'm going to set the X value of the crown here um, to zero, just so that it's kind of off screen, um, so it doesn't break. Uh, so the X value is this one here, D04. Uh, so the crown is, is going to be, actually no, the crown is still going to have the wrong sprite pointer, but the sprite pointer might get set. I think the problem is that we weren't turning on the sprite here. Um, so I think this will, will probably solve that, but let's, let's try it again. I like this team, whatever this is. I like, um, what do they call them? Um, those, what do they call them? Hat, uh, hits. I like those. They're kind of cool. All right, let's uh, let's get killed. So I drop that. Um, so I should probably get killed somewhere where it's I can actually. I don't have to recover it. One for here, please. All right, there we go. Right. Oh god, I still picked it up. All right, there we go. Right. So player two has all the platforms now. Ah, oh, no, the, the the button is a different color at that point. Whitney Houston. Oh, please tell me there's a Whitney Houston tune. No, okay. Ah, yeah, okay. So the crown, the crown has appeared this time, but the crown isn't colored correctly. So that's what we do need to do. We need to move the color in, uh, which is probably in here somewhere. There we go. So I'm just going to move that into here. So now the crown is, is mostly set up before the, the bonus starts. But it looks like the values are correct now. I, I want to check. 
uh, to see what happens if player one gets all the platforms. Orchestral hits, that's the one. Thank you, Chromos. I like that. It reminds me of kind of um like eighties eighties dance music had a lot of that in it when they were starting because it was a really good way to kind of bring in um the drop as we call it now, but it was a it was a really good way to, to do that. Orchestral hits, yeah, I do remember now. Okay, so we should have a, a, a what looks like a fairly even division. So I'm going to count here now. So 5 to 1, 8, 11, 12, 13 to 1, 13 to 2. So 20 to 2, 20 to 8. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 20 to 16. So player two should have 16. So the total should be 36. This seems to be pretty good. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. And this seems to be spot on. And you can see there player two. Player two finished with the crown. So they, they got. They got the most point, and if this came down to, um, yeah, this came down to the crown basically. So you can see how important having the crown is. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Uh, the story of the orchestra is tied up in retro communities. Really, it felt like music could be featured a floppy disk with a handful of samples on it. One with which was an orchestral hit, and that's because the Fairlight was invented in Australia. My friend's dad one. That's really cool. That's really cool. I, I I remember doing uh, music on the Amiga, I think it was at the time, uh, using uh, Optimed or Fast Track. It might have been the PC, actually. I can't remember. But um, it was so easy to just drop an orchestral hit into something um, and have it introduce the next bar nicely. And you could like you could either start the bar with an orchestral hit or you could do like, burr, burr, burr. you could do a couple uh, to bring in the next bar. And it was really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do like the orchestral here. It's, it's got a lot of kind of, it reminds me of like late eighties, early nineties kind of dance music. It was used quite a lot in that. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this screen now. Um. I want to do some more tests where player one goes through the door. I just want to keep an eye on those things. So I'm going to grab the crown with player one. I'm going to try and get as many points now with player one as possible. Um, but I am going to kill the enemies with player two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the enemies with player two, but I'm going to grab the crown and tag the floor with player one uh, and, and just see what happens. I just want to make sure that the ground, uh, the, the, the bars kind of go up at the same, at uh, the right times. But I think we might be finished with this screen for the most part. Uh, there's a little bit of crown kind of placement that we need to do. Um, but that's that's fine. That's to be expected. Right. So I just want player two to really uh, to do the eating. So player one to grab all the points on the floor. I want player two to do the eating. So the player two is going to get some points. Uh, but player one is going to get the majority of points here. And the reason I want player one to get the majority of points is because I want to see if that bar goes down at any point. So you see his bar's going up, his bar's going up. No, that seemed to be spot on. So let's work this out. Is it correct? So we know that player two got all the enemies. So there's 500 points there. That's fine. Uh, player one got the crown, so that's 10,000. 36 times 250 is 9,000. So that's 19,000 plus 5,000, 24,000. This looks pretty spot on. I think we're done with this. Okay, cool. So what I want to look at next is um, loading levels in. So first of all, we're just going to start by trying to load a random level in. So I'm going to I'm going to copy some of these uh, levels out of the editor. Now, I don't know if I actually 
if I actually change the editor to actually export levels as binaries, I think I did. Let's load, let's load a couple of levels in. So I've had a few sent to me today. So let's have a look. I can't remember which ones they were though now. So um, let's try and load some of those in. So I think this was one. I need to go and check my Discord. I do need to attribute these to the right people as well. So give me a second. Um, Uh, hmm. Who gave me the level? Well, oh, this is Akmafin's level. Okay, so let's have a look at Akmafin's level. Okay, cool. Nice and simple. That's kind of a good start. Uh, my only thing I would say here is probably to keep to one enemy type or two enemy types. This marshmallow guy is quite um, erratic. But it might it might work. So let's let's just try let's just try and export that. So uh, if I export level, I can export as a binary. Okay, cool. So this is already set up for me. But these are the sort of things we'll um, we, yeah we can mod if we need be exactly. So I I'm not too fussed. I'm what I'm more interested in is the the kind of shape of the levels. The enemy lists can be adjusted. So uh, two cute sids. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to read that name out, but yes, there's two. What level editor? This is a custom level editor for this game. Um, so, um, it is available on my Discord. If you go into the uh, Pick and Mix, uh, channel, Pick and is it called Pick and Mix? I forget what I call it. Pick and Mix editor. If you go into the Pick and Mix editor uh, channel, it's pinned to the top, and that's on my Discord, which is. Uh, there uh, is a very it's a custom level editor you can't load in new tile sets the tile set is 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 hard coded um and you have to use these for, oh i need to save first let me just save this map out okay uh let's call it map six um so you can pick tile sets like this and it's just a way of kind of making it easy for for the viewers to kind of to build levels that kind of fit a certain pattern uh so Aquafin has done this with tile set two um and then you can define what enemies appear so this is a, a level with three enemies uh and no power up so it's a it's a very uh very early starter level um as i say we'd probably probably remove this one and put a different enemy in here maybe one of these repeated um just because this guy is a bit kind of heavy-handed and um on an early level it might be a bit discouraging to have that thing stump on your head all the time so let's uh let's let's try and import that level now now the thing is we can't just import the level directly in here this data has to stay like this and the reason it has to stay like this is because it's it's set up perfectly with the labels. All these labels need to stay in the places that there are. The this this level is kind of irrelevant, um, and and the data that's in here is irrelevant. But the positions of these labels are not irrelevant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the map here instead, and then we're going to have a routine which actually loads the map in. So first of all, the the first kind of load for this map is just going to copy the data from here into this location that's all it's going to do um actually is that map data actually i feel like that's in the wrong place map data map data oh oh no this might work actually this might just work by putting this here okay let's try it i could have done this earlier then when i was looking for but basically the way this is going to work is we have this reserved area of 768 bytes. That is the unpacked area for our uh, sprites. Oh, who's going to get this one? Um, not the not sprites, sorry. This is the unpacked area for our map data. Um, then what's going to happen is we're going to have... Oh, SP175, well done. Uh, we're going to have... Um, compressed version, XMized versions of these maps uh, lying around. And what they're going to do is they're going to unpack into this area as we need them. So we're always going to leave, and the reason I leave 768 is because it leaves a huge amount of, of room. 
we probably don't need that much room and we could probably reduce that a little bit as we go on uh, depending on the size of these levels when they're unpacked but I'm, I'm putting seven six eight so we've got a bit of a buffer and we don't um we don't run out of space basically um but what I've obviously done in the build is allowed um, an overlap. So this data is indeed stored at 8300, and that's exactly where it shows here. You can see there, 8300, but it is virtual, uh, which means that map data is um, it, it's just storing these uh, these labels and nothing else. This is the actual map that's going to get loaded into that area, uh, which is what this is showing here. Um, so we're going to start by just trying to load Atkinfin's level and we'll give it a little play and see if it works. Should do. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, I think as Atkinfin said, there is a, there is one, uh, enemy which you have to kind of, oh no, that didn't work at all. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So maybe that binary is not quite correct. Hmm. So what was in here before? Uh, not that one. What was in here before? Map 001. Okay, so let me just go and have a look at the map 001 data. Uh, not in there. We need desktop. Oh, God. Wow, this import is horrible. Let's make it again. There we go. Assets, maps. So this is the map that it's loading in um, and let me just create another window of this oh god it's put me back there again all right uh desktop How can she not pronounce the same thing twice in a row? She pronounces it differently every time. Thanks for the resub, uh, Hayes. 12 months. Wow. Awesome. A whole year. Fucking hell. Time flies, man. Time really flies. Because you're getting old. When you get old, it just, it just disappears. Okay, so... Uh, if you look at this map, it's way bigger. And I don't know why... Um, but you can see this is our very, very basic level. This is the more complex level. Uh, but it looks like it's, it's actually important as comma separated values. It's, it, it, you see what I mean? It's not, it's not actually exporting the binary properly. So I think the editor, uh, I think I need to make a fix in the editor somewhere. Um, because if I test it like this, it will work, right? Yeah, so it's it's working in here. I just I obviously need to export the values properly. Uh but what I can do um is I can actually can I do it from there? Maybe I can do it from inside here. Let me tr let me try. But yeah, that that binary is it's actually exporting comma separated values and it doesn't look like it's exported everything I need it to export. Uh which is a bit worrying. Uh, which I might actually have to fix tonight because I, I, I kind of want to be able to test this. Because I wanted to get, uh, the next thing I wanted to do was get the XMized levels in. Um, oh, so so one thing I've noticed, um, and I probably should have made this automatic in the editor, is the uh, the level colors are wrong here. So you can see when it's colored red there, it looks a little bit odd because that's yellow. Uh, and that's because the the actual uh, level color is set wrong. So that level color should be, um, I think it's light gray in this, which is this one here. Is it that one? I think it's that one. There we go. Yeah, it's that one. But again, small, small changes. So that's good. But um, why did that kill me? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. So, so one of the bugs we've got is if you stand on the the MSB border of the sprite, uh, and a and a, and an enemy 
crosses the screen boundary, then it will kill you. Um, so if I just leave that to walk across and I stand around about here somewhere, I think that's roughly about this MSB. Uh, what would it be? It would be eight. It would be two forty two thirty two. Uh, which is my head can't count properly, but if I stand around about here, I'll probably die. Yeah, there you go. And it's just a problem with the the wrap in here. So as the enemy moves off the screen here, um, the collision check that we do is against a, a value here, but with an MSB over here, and so it kills us. So it's so it's a bug I know about. It's a bug I need to fix, but that's probably what what you saw. I think anyway, it might not have been what I saw. There we go. No, I think light gray is wrong as well. I need to figure out what the color was for this. But yeah, the uh, the the multicolor needs to match the the level of the, the the tile set as well. So I might have to set that according to the tile set that you use. Um, oh my god, Doctor Goggles! I can't believe I thought you were just typing random stuff in, but it actually found that. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is the MSB bug. That's probably what it is. Also, I notice the player is not drawn um, in this mode. So let's... Oh, it's not drawn because this is the old bonus. That's why. Okay, let me see if I can grab that level out and put it in. Because this, we've got a slightly better test level here now. So uh, let's grab that. And then I'm going to have to go to the toilet in a minute. I'm going to finish my wine first, though. Okay, let's see if we can save um, expecting a file name. Okay, let's call it uh, Mac Six Stop Bin. Uh, that was a file name. Expecting a device number, so device number zero, I think, gives us that. Expecting an address, eight three hundred two eight five ff. Okay, but the question is, where the hell did it put that? Uh, hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's have a look in. This is why I prefer the uh, the C six four debugger for this. Uh, no, it's not in this. Is it's in local? There we go. Programs. Yeah. Pick and mix editor. There we go. Map six stop in. Okay, cool. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go and stick that in our folder. Obviously, I need to I need to fix this so that the value it actually writes into memory for for the vice export is also the value it writes because as you can see here it's just exporting the map data as comma values which is which is obviously wrong and not going to work. Need to find some wine. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and hold out for the toilet until I finish this. And then I can actually start on a new bottle when I get back. Um but I'm 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 extending the smoking breaks by half an hour. That's pretty good for me. Oh CPU jab, interesting. Um huh. Something does look off there, and I can't put my finger on what it is, but it does look off. Well, let's check against the editor. Oh yeah, it's shifted over by... by two tiles. Ah, maybe it's created a PRG file. Maybe we need to uh, open that in, in here and have a look. It has, it's created a PRG. So when you export, when you save, always check the first two bytes in your file. I haven't saved that a binary, I've saved that a PRG. So what this has done is it's actually put the address that I'm trying to load into into the first two bytes. So I need to delete those, save, because that's obviously going to cause problems with all this data that, that relies on things being in its specific places and are going to be shifted by two. 
the reason I realized that was because the map had shifted by two tiles across. So obviously uh, the first two bytes that it was reading as tiles weren't actually tiles. So these things here, you can kind of tell from this one here. Um, this was fine because it was zero, but this was 8.3 and there is no 8.3 in the tile set. Uh, there's only 128 tiles in the tile set, not, not 131, which is what this one is pointing to. So that's why that happened. And hopefully now we should be able to see that sort itself out when we go back in. Also means the uh, extending, uh, extending the gap between smoke breaks, sorry. <laughs> I do need to stop completely. I'm, I am going to give it a try probably on Tuesday, uh, but I am doing Z80, so I may just end up getting really angry and, and having a smoke anyway. But what I might do is just not buy any cigarettes and just rely on, I'll just have a backup vape pen just to, to deal with that. Because I do want to stop. It's, it is very frustrating. There we go. And hopefully now we should see the player on the... Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so there's still something a little bit odd here, and I think it's because there is no crown, but the... Okay, let me do that again. I think what happened then is because there was no crown, it didn't quite know what to do with the crown. So it displayed something a bit odd over here. So I need to keep an eye on that. Let's have a look. So where does it... So it puts the crown up there, but that's not going to... Oh, okay, I do need to get up there. Oh, shit, that's going to be hard. Actually, this is probably not a first level thing at all because you have to do you have to do some quite nifty stuff sometimes. Oh, for me, the vaping is more about um, is more about the alcohol really than anything. It's just, I, I, yes, okay. I saw. You, I don't know if you saw that. There was definitely the uh, the crown jumped off there. Um, so I need to make sure that doesn't happen if there's only one player and no crown awarded. Um, okay. The, do you know what the, the biggest problem, um, the biggest problem with the vaping for me is it, it's really bad for my chest. And I know smoking is bad for my chest, but vaping seems to be worse. Um, so I, I've kind of avoided um whenever i whenever i vape excessively my chest really hurts so um can't resist i'm getting a domino's pizza oh god i really want a domino's pizza now so i had today it was amazing uh was it sizzling sizzling steak what's it who knew that they existed because they're fucking amazing they're the best thing ever i've tried nicotine patches they don't work for me at all um, they don't, the, the craving for me is, I don't think it's, um, I, I don't think it's really the nicotine that I'm craving. It's a habit thing. So it's like, if I eat, I, I kind of want to smoke, but I've got over that. I can kind of, I can eat and not deal with that anymore. It used to be like, if I had a cup of coffee, if I had something to eat, I'd want to smoke. Now it's alcohol. And this is the big one. This is the one I really struggle because you're, you're kind of, um, your 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 willpower and your control goes a lot when you drink so um but yeah it's, nicotine patches have never worked for me yeah exactly i'd i'd have like a really strong nicotine patch on and i'd still be smoking uh and the other thing that never worked for me as well is gum the nicotine gum oh my god it's the most disgusting thing ever if anything it made me want to smoke more because it's like this is gross i'm just going to throw it away and smoke I haven't tuned in in a while just over the hobbling out of the gate end of level animation well done good fun on that no problem. That was um, that was actually um, oh god, I'm gonna get his name wrong now. Stoker that did that animation. Knock knock. Who's there? Fresh cat meat. I'll tell you who's there. Me needing a pee. So that's gonna happen right now. Dom. 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 Who? <laughs> I'm playing along. Dom, he knows. <laughs> Fresh cat meat. Maybe that's one of the ingredients in, in Proud Seven's pizza. How do you organize a space party? Uh, eat planet. Oh my god. Right, on that terrible joke, I'm gonna go and take a quick break. I'll be back in <laughs> I'll be back in two or three minutes, guys. Be right back.
All right, I'm back. Let's have a look. Oh, no. oh I'm going to have a go at this, see if I can get it. Oh, I'm starting to feel a bit drunk now. Hmm, it's a very... Oh! Is it? <laughs> Who got that? I... Wait, how did you get... Oh, interesting. It allowed... <laughs> I don't know how that allowed that. <laughs> you were lucky there. It's it's obviously you can type quiz in any old crap after it. Oh, how did Hayes not get that? He must be asleep now. Oh no, <laughs> Hayes is not asleep. Oh, I've scratched myself in the back of my neck somehow, unless my cat's doing it. Cats are always bloody scratching me. I brought brought myself a packet of Watsits as well, and these are the things I'm on about. What's it sizzling state? Amazing. Mmm, delicious. Right. That bottle down there, out of the way. So I'm going to try this now. It's been breathing for an hour. Mm, smells all right. It's Malbec, so I don't mind a Malbec. It's Argentinian as well. I do like South American reds, so. Uh, what are you saying yes to there? Just finish your Malbec. Well, cheers. Mm, yeah, that's quite good, actually, for a cheap. I say cheap, it was Waitrose. It wasn't exactly super cheap, but. <laughs> oh, Airwolf again. <laughs> cool. So I think what we need to do now is is start loading a couple of levels in. So obviously the level we've got here is is just loaded in automatically. So what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to load the original level that we had, this one. So this is going to be our first level. And then I'm going to st store some stuff. Denying Andy any listens. <laughs> Cider's made the keys on my keyboard look funny. <laughs> uh, I wish I could explain to you guys how 6502 looks to me when I'm drunk. It's really weird. It just makes more sense to me when I'm drunk. I don't know why. I, I I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. It's strange. But for some reason, it just looks more logical. In fact, straight away, I can see I don't need to do that. I can just get rid of that. Oh, no. What I wanted to do was fix that um, extra crown thing. Um, so if, hmm, where is it? It's going to be, there's going to be an animation in here, which is going to animate that crown off screen. Um, crown tween, hmm, could be this bit here. Uh, but no, because we're going to no crown. Okay, so let me, let me, let me demonstrate the problem again. And then we'll try and load Atkinfin's level in. So what we'll do is we'll we'll compress Atkinfin's level, uh, and we'll get it to load. In fact, we'll we'll actually we'll compress two levels, and we'll get it to load both of them in when the levels start. So these are absolutely delicious. I don't think you guys in America get anything like this. What's the closest thing to what's it's guys in America? Is it cheesy pops or something? So they look like this. They look like little little worms but they're really soft and you know, they just melt in your mouth and this is usually uh usually a cheese flavor but they do they do Amer i think in america it's cheesy puffs um let's have a look no not cheesy puffs um 
Hmm. There's got to be there's got to be something like that. Cheetos is more like knickknacks, isn't it? I guess. Um, hang on, what's Cheetos? I'm sure Cheetos are more like knickknacks than they are. Uh, yeah, Cheetos are more like knickknacks, so it's not Cheetos. Try explaining quavers. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, my God, you guys don't get quavers. Oh. So this is Quavers. Um, let me find a picture of... There we go. This is Quavers. Um, they're like... They're really hard to describe, actually, yeah. I was going to say, it's nothing similar in the US. The smallest pack is two kilograms, yeah. Yeah. They have cheese. Yo, know, they do have cheesy puffs. That's to be fair. That's the only reason I know of cheesy puffs is because of Cartman going cheesy puffs, mom, cheesy puffs. Funyuns are just onion rings. Funyuns, funyuns are just what we call onion rings here. Yeah, yeah, we we get them here as well, but they're under under lots of different lots of different names. <laughs> Licking a dead mama is marmite. <laughs> non crunchy Cheetos. All right, so they do different brands of them. Okay. Cheetos puffs, that's what they're called. Yeah, so this is probably the closest you're going to get to what's it. Same thing. Uh, and I'm not a massive fan of the cheesy Watsits, but these these uh, sizzling steak ones are delicious. Anyway. All right. Who, who asked for that? Eldritch. <laughs> Thanks, Eldritch. Cheers. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, we're going to load in extra levels at this point here. So I'm going to create the, this is where the levels are going to start. Um, I'm going to call it compressed levels. Now, for now, they're not going to be compressed. We're just going to try and load in levels one at a time. And we're going to need a lookup table for these as well. Oh, my God, these are so bad. Can this be the game music, please? <laughs> we should make it the high score music, shouldn't we, or something? Sorry. Man, these are really good. Okay, so the compressed levels will contain the same level. So bear in mind, this is this is just placeholder. So between 83,000 and 8,300 uh, 8, and uh, 8,600 is just the, where the map unpacks to. The actual compressed levels can live in here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, um, for now, I'm just going to put labels in here. And I'm going to call them like this. Um, Like so. So now we've got some actual levels that fit here. Now we need a level list somewhere. Um, so actually, I'm going to shift this up to 8680, like so. Uh, and then at 8600, we're going to have the level lookup. Now, the reason we need a level lookup is because when compressed these levels are going to be all diff all sorts of different sizes so we need to make sure that this level lookup points to um each level in a way that we can grab the levels so what we'll do is we'll take the level number we'll times it by two and we'll use that as a lookup uh into this list so for now it's just going to have these two levels and they're not going to be compressed 
Um, but in Mapload now, what we can do is we can start building a uh, here uh, draw map. Is it draw map or is it load? Yeah, it is draw map, isn't it? Because draw map is what is what is called. So this is where we call it. But before we do this, we need to go to load um, load level, and we'll we'll put that right here. So what is load level going to do? So load level is going to take our current level number, which we need to change actually, because at the moment it's pointing to level 23. Um, so I need to go and find where the level number is in here. I say it says current level zero in here. Oh, interesting. Because um, it's definitely not level zero. It's level 23, I think, or something. So I need to check that that's actually being set somewhere. So I think it is. Um, Yeah, it's not set in there, so it must be set somewhere else. Uh, current level, current level. Hmm, where is that being set, actually? Or are we just showing it in the bonus? Are we just overriding that value in the bonus? Let's have a look. Oh, my eyes are itching there. Could you randomize the last note to be, oh man, that would be great. Even though they sound wrong, I think they're deliberately picked to sound very jarring. Mm, just ran out. They were really good. I don't really like eating on stream, but whatever. I've I've felt the need then. Mm, sorry, I've got a message. I just need to check what it is. Oh, holy shit! Hang on. I've just been sent a message by a friend of mine. So the Oliver, Oliver twins are making wonderful Dizzy for the Spectrum. What the hell? They're creating a new Spectrum game. Holy shit, it's the Oliver twins as well. Wow, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so there you go, Warlocks has posted it. Is that the same one? Holy shit. That's really cool. Uh, oh, it's for the Spectrum Next, I think. Uh, but that looks like it could be done on the Spectrum. It doesn't look like, doesn't look like it has to be Spectrum Next, unless they're using sprites or something. Wow, OK. They should make the last of it as a V8 version 2. <laughs> Dizzy is shite. Don't say that. I like Dizzy. Jail Cordero uh, called Dero, Dairo. Uh, thank you for the follow, dude. That's still really cool. The, f the fact that they're actually making stuff um, is, is cool. Uh, I mean, you know, they... I mean, I don't know what their status is with Codemasters anymore, if they're still part of Codemasters nowadays, but I would have... I would suspect that maybe not. Maybe they've kind of sold their stake and it moved on, uh, which is probably why they're they're doing this now, just as a bit of a thing. But but I like Dizzy. Dizzy is good. Dizzy was one of those games where when I went to buy, I'd, I'd get my pocket money and I'd go out, um, I'd go to the local computer shop or to the Woolworths or to the Boots or whatever, and I'd I'd look for a game to buy. Um, and one of maybe three things would happen. Either there would be a, a budget game I was particularly waiting for, um, and then I'd buy that. There'd be um, a full price game that I'd want, in which case I'd save up a, a week or two for, for the full price game. Um, or 
neither of the first two, and I would just buy a random budget game. And the thing is, is when I'd look for random budget games, I would, I would, I would take my Commodore formats, my my recent Commodore formats, and uh, and Zaps, and I would find something that 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 kind of interested me and had a decent score. And if I couldn't find anything, I'd always fall back to a Dizzy game. So I ended up playing all the Dizzy games, not because they were my first choice, but because they were my fallback game. Um, so I really enjoyed it. So the Oliver Twins told me they aren't interested in 8-bit platforms anymore. So yeah, next. Well, I mean, let's be honest. The next is, I mean, especially the, the look of that, it looks like they're doing um, a game that follows all the Spectrum rules. I mean, maybe the only thing they're doing there is using... Um, using sprites because i know there's still color clash they've still got the color clash and everything so if you look at this there's still color clash there look and it's all the same yeah it's it's this is 100 percent spectrum maybe one to eight compatible um but it's cool it's cool that they're doing it it's, it's good to see it's good to see kind of um with devs from back in the day doing this stuff so i i definitely feel your your pain on that the jump mechanics are, are painful uh in in dizzy but that was that was part of the kind of um part of the charm of it looking at that there is no color oh, there was definitely color clash there so this this one here look at look at the bottom corner of dizzy there he's yellow and here he's yellow Definitely looks like there's color clash going on in Dizzy. Because Dizzy should just be white, right? But there's definite color clash going on there. Ooh, interesting. Who's going to get this right? <laughs> Acmuffin fell into the trap. <laughs> I I really like the ones with um with a couple of different versions. I think it's really cool because they catch people out. Yeah, this red wine's nuts. I like it. Strong, but it's nice. Percent is it actually? It's only thirteen <clears throat> percent. Okay, so we've put the level lookups in here. So we're pointing to two levels now. Uh, and we've added uh, in the map loader up here um, a load level. Now, I, I've just realized I should have been sorting out the crown on the other level. So I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Let's get the level loading in and then we'll go back and have a look at that. So load level. So we need to uh, load the current level, which for some reason is not being set. So let me just check in. That's why we're in here. Well, let's have a look for the number 23. Uh, let's have a look for the number 23 in hex. Uh, hmm, okay. Let's have a look for the number 23 in uh, non hex. Okay, um, so we're generating a sprite and it says level 23, so I'm just wondering where it's getting that 23 from. Uh, looking in here, start, okay. Set up initial screen, play data, level sprite. Here we go. Draw level number. Okay, let's go and have a look at that. Draw level number. Uh, first, clear the numbers. Load emulator with current level. Ah, why is that in zero page? That should not be in zero page. Current level is indeed in zero page. Okay. Um, let's change that. That shouldn't be there, really. Uh, let's just make sure that's not being used anywhere else. Uh, okay, so we're using it in here. We're using it in here. These are both in the bonus screen. Other than that, we're not using it. So we should be using player.currentLevel. That's what we should be using. So let me just copy that uh, and go to these places. So 249 and 389. So this should be 249. Oh, 389. Okay. So just to go back to 249, just to see what's going on here. Okay, so uh, load the current level compared with 9. 
not sure why oh because we we have to set value okay right so let's try let's just have a look for current level again where is that being set to 23 okay it's been set to 23 here which is at the beginning of our intro okay so we have set that to zero because 16 is 22 which will add one so we're going to store that at uh, player current level thank you for the follow scouse potato that's a great name i like that um so you're from liverpool then so you're you're for me you're my my kind of footballing enemies uh because i'm a i'm a manchester united fan so uh liverpool are my sworn enemies Rawr. liverpool and man city my sworn enemies uh, not that I should be saying anything because United are doing fucking terrible at the moment. So, actually, I did check today's score. Does anybody know today's today's uh, football score with United? I think they play Brighton. Uh, that's not showing in my feed. Shit, I need to check that. Actually, one second, guys. <laughs> so, sorry, I have to know the score. So. Uh... Oh, we won. Fucking hell, 3-2, though. That was not... Okay, we should have won more than that, but okay, whatever. Jesus. Oh, fucking hell, Chelsea drew with West Brom as well. Wow, okay. That, that sounds like it was an interesting match, actually. Was that like a last-minute comeback? Oh, fucking hell, it was as well. <laughs> so they were... So Chelsea were 3-0 down. Wow. And they pulled back. Uh, and they pulled back to 3-2 and scored in injury time. Wow, okay. Interesting. Oh, Chiz, are you a Chelsea fan? Interesting, interesting. Uh. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, Andy's right. I live in London, so of course I support United. But um, I was... I've been a United fan my whole life, although I'd lived in East Anglia, so I probably should have been an Ipswich or a Norwich fan. Um, but then I, all my family was uh, lived up north. All my family were United fans, so um, I just supported United from a young age. So by the time I could actually understand what was going on, it was too late. I already, I already uh, followed. Um, uh, oh, somebody outside is excited by that. Anyway. Um, Hot jams beef. Oh my god! What? What? Why are you? What are you doing there? Wow. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, let's continue. Um. Okay. So now we've set the proper player levels. So what I want to do now is I just want to do an RTS from load level. I just want to make sure that the level number is showing correctly because we've just moved where it is. I'm going to get rid of that in there. We don't need that anymore. I'm intrigued actually how much how much zero page are we actually using there? Uh the memory block eight three hundred eight is overlaps level lookup. Oh, okay. Uh eight three hundred to eight six hundred. Unnamed. Overlaps level lookup. So is this is overlapping level lookup? No. It seems odd that it would, but let's let's give it a try. Demo map eight three hundred to eight six hundred. Map zero zero one dot bin. Okay, I'm just gonna load that map in just to make sure. I might just need to delete one byte from it. Uh, so it's probably padded with zeros at the end, which it is. And yeah, there's an extra byte. Okay, I just need to delete that one byte. There we go. You need to turn on BTTV. Oh, right. Is that what all that was? I chat with in Streamlabs. I'm going to do that right now, actually. Uh, oh, wait, but is this the... Ch ah, but what chat am I actually using? I can't remember what chat I'm using. I'm using Night Dev OBS chat, whatever that is. I might need to change that. Okay, that's probably a bit more than I need. To, uh, 
more than I can do right now. I will do that at some point. Um, how can I remember that? Uh, I'll just have to remember. I'll, I'll make a note on this piece of paper here. There we go. I'll write chat in huge letters. BTTV. Okay. Yeah, I'm using uh, Night Dev. So maybe I'll change that at some point. Which is probably why it's uh, it's showing weird stuff. Um, I'm sure if I can do that. Uh, Night Dev. Oh no, I have no idea. I'm not. I'm not going to mess around with that now. Um, I'll probably change that to Streamlabs chat then at some point. Yeah, who was it who had the Commodore logo in the uh in the night? Was it eighties or nineties? I remember somebody having the the Commodore logo. I don't know why I keep thinking Fulham, but I don't think it was Fulham. I'm pretty sure it was a white kit. Oh, it was Chelsea. Ah, yes, you're right. It was Chelsea. Yes. Yes. Oh, interesting. So, okay. There was a definite issue down here which we, which we need to sort out. Let me just try restarting the level because I'm a bit worried about that now. It could be because I just removed that current level number from zero page because we have these scores here as well. Um, I'm not sure, but let, let's have a look. So I'm just going to use one player. I'm just going to try and finish this level with the crown. The scum. <laughs> so who's your who's your team then, Hayes? Because you're obviously a, you seem like a football fan. I assume you'd be another London club. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's something weird going on down here. I don't know what that's about. Also, no player on the top here. So it's almost like changing that level has screwed things up massively here. Um, okay, let me let me just put that back in there. I just want to see if adding that zero page back in is going to be... Tottenham. I, th I had a feeling you'd be a, a London club. I don't know why. Have you always lived in London, or is it um is it a kind of recent work thing that you've moved to London? I guess supporting Tottenham, you must be, uh, to support Tottenham. Tottenham isn't the sort of club you support when you live somewhere else, really. So I'm guessing you've always been a Londoner, a Londoner. Dad's from Battersea. Okay, that explains that then. Yeah. Ah, okay, right. There's something really odd going on here now. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why. Because we're not seeing a player here, which worries me. I want to try with two players now. I'm, I'm worried that I've broken things now. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, actually, Jizz. <laughs> Grew up in Horsham. I mean, it's close enough, though. See, the funny thing is, is my, my granddad supported Man City. My dad supported Bolton. So I, I really shouldn't be a United supporter. Um, but it was like the majority ruled in my family. So um, for me, it... what have I done? What have I done that's broken this so much? Oh my god, what have I done? I have seriously broken something here and I don't know what it is. Okay, let me just... Okay, I'm going to leave that there because I think that's fine. Because uh, all we were doing was or in a value in there. It's current level in index. Um, one like no, I don't think it's the line I deleted above the aura. Uh, it's current level in index, which is zero based. Well, I, I've restored the current level in here, uh, and I'm going to restore it back here again and see what happens. Um, because it's it's very strange. 
Well, what's bothering me is that it's grabbing those values from here, right? This is where the score is set. Um, that's what's that's what's worrying me here. Oh my god, we're so it's so close to having this game like a full game loop. Um, and I really want to get that done by well by the end of October. I want a full game loop with with levels loading a lot. And actually, that's quite a bit of time, so I think it's possible. But I just need to be less distracted. That's the problem. Oh my god, no. What have I done? What have I done? Okay, so Andy says, is the current level an index which is zero-based? Yes, it should be. Um, but you can see that's actually working here. The level's been set to zero, but we've seen one here. So let me just set the level back to what it was, uh, which was one six. I have to say the the taking the Sid to Isengard is probably my favourite Sid that you guys request. The the kind of favourite um joke Sid that you guys request. No, I'm not gonna have another break for at least another half an hour. I've got I think I've got like three cigarettes left. I don't wanna make them last. Okay, so this is level twenty three again now, so I'm I'm intrigued to know if this is gonna break in the same way ah interesting okay so so okay okay so now let's try changing this for player current level um god how do i how do i fix this now okay uh Draw level number. Okay, uh, let's check for that in. I do like this tune. I know I probably shouldn't, but I really do like it. Player dot current level. Okay, so player dot current level is that set anywhere else? That's what I want to check. Uh, let's get rid of the player dot here. No, so we're only setting it in those two places. Everywhere else is just using it. Okay, so let's see if this works with the same value in here. Maybe it's a level issue with the index. Yeah, I'm, I, what's bothering me, though, is the fact that using the value 23 fixes it. I mean, it seems a very random number to just suddenly have work and, and not elsewhere. It's definitely odd, that's that's for sure. Um Oh damn it, I do need a P as well. So I, I'm gonna try and hold this in for See it's working with level twenty three. That's really weird. Okay, let's let's try some other values then. So let's so in uh in here we're setting level twenty three. So this is the first level. So if we set zero, this is where we're seeing a problem. So I would just want to replicate that problem. Maybe it's an issue with the index level. <laughs> I like how you're all just repeating the same thing. Oh my god. Oh crappy likes it. Yes, I do. Oh, here we go. Quiz. I'm I'm intrigued in the quiz as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and continue, but I'm gonna also pay attention to the quiz. Uh oh, I know what this is. I know what it is. Who's gonna get it? He's going to get it. Nice. Well done, Eldritch. Oh, hey, he's got it, actually. Well done. I, I really do like that because it's good. What I might do is um, change my... Yeah, see, look. As soon as I change that number breaks here okay let's try a number that's not zero let's try zero one let's see what that does maybe like like you guys say maybe the zero index is causing a problem maybe there's a branch if equals somewhere um then don't change it I, yeah but i can't make every level level 23 <laughs> what level are you on level 23 oh yeah but which level 23 
So this is level one. So if this works, this means it's probably there's a branch it equals somewhere. No, it hasn't worked. Okay, so now let's try uh, let's try twenty twenty two um, and twenty four. See what they do. Level forty two. Level twenty four. <laughs> I'm going to deliberately make sure level twenty four is an absolute bitch to play just just for haze. By the way, and I and I haven't mentioned it at all tonight, which is unusual, but um Mega sixty five, when that comes out, we're gonna be doing um an R type style client. I've wanted to do a, a shoot 'em up for a while. See, that works. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um I've wanted to do uh, a shoot 'em up for a while and I've started a couple here and there and, and never really kind of got on with it. Um but with the Mega sixty five, um I've been reading about the uh the, the tech specs of it and i really think there's an, an amazing way we can uh we can do a shoot em up on that and i think it will be one million uh percent um better than anything that the, the raw c64 can do so what i want to do is um is create a really really high quality shoot em up that has the same c64 palette but with lighter and darker tones of the same thing um have a mode that randomizes the levels. I think it would work great. Actually, that's not a bad idea, actually. I think that would probably work okay in this game. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. I think that could work. Uh, why do they have red and blue pixels under their hair? Blue and red pixels under their hair. I don't know. They're just, just, just written like that. They're just made like that. We can change that. Keep cutting the value in half until it breaks. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, right? So let's let's go let's go for like level thirteen. See what happens. I don't understand why it would break though. That's the weird thing. Uh, so it should be filling these values in with blank values, but maybe it's maybe there's some carryover somewhere that it's it's failing on. But let's have a look. I'm glad we're still on this level and not on a slightly more complex level. You can have that idea for 250,000 shimmy shillings. Well, if I implement that idea, you can have 250,000 shimmy shillings, I promise you. I, I think it's, I, I do think it's a good idea, though. I think it, it adds like a a fun game mode to it. Um, it would have to be well, it would have to be well marked as well, because, you know, see, it's working there as well. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Uh hmm. Okay. Okay, let's let's yep, yeah, I think uh, whoever said to keep half in it, that's a really good idea. Uh I don't know who said that. I need to give fresh cat meat. Uh good good idea there, because that's but we're showing that there's probably some kind of cut off where this is uh this is breaking, so just don't use the RNG from your Sid player or quiz. Well, there is no RNG in the in the SID player. That that's just fuzzy logic being fuzzy logic. The problem is, is if you've got like fifty tunes that match a particular search, and you have to pick one, picking one out of that is 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 difficult. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm I'm impressed it finds what it does find. No, okay, so it breaks there. Okay, right. So let's start moving that towards OC. So let's start with O eight because that's just over the, like the third bit. Um, and it might be to do with that third bit, and I really am squirming in my seat, so I may have to go very soon. Oh, the yes. Well, it's not even RNG. The um, it's a set playlist. Um, but obviously, I start the overlay way before the stream. I start the overlay about fifteen minutes before the stream. So what happens is if you guys, uh, if the SID list runs out, it just goes to the next tune in that list. If you request a SID, it just it just skips that tune. So all it's doing is it's just dropping back to that same playlist. So it's it's the same, pretty much the same order every time. Uh, and that SID list is only maybe eighty tunes or so. Um, oh no, no, it's it's uh, two hundred tunes actually. It does actually say, okay, so it's failing at eight. Okay, let's try 
mind. Well, let's try A, because that's kind of in the middle. I think I might know the problem. I think I've just figured it out, or at least figured out the the root, uh, the source of the problem. I'd have to kind of decode the code a little bit to work out what's going on. I think this is going to work fine. Yeah, it does. I mean, except for the fact that the crown did that funny thing, but that's a separate problem. Um, now, the reason why I think this works is because in here, we've got this compare nine. Oops. If I was to change that, it would do something different. So I need to figure out what the hell this compare nine is doing. Uh, so this is saying if we're nine or more, go to here. So nine would work as well. So if I go in here and do nine, nine would work. <laughs> oh God, I really do need the toilet in a minute. Uh, no, I'm not using BCD, um, but it is kind of related to that. It's because I have a piece of code which is um, which is converting the value in in order to display it properly. Um, I think it's just not. It's oh god, yeah, I definitely need a piece. It's making me shiver. Oh. Yes, it's working there. So this is the problem. Um, so let's put a number that breaks. So that, that definitely breaks. Uh, so what's happening is it gets to this point. Uh, and what is this doing? This is loading the level number in. Okay. And then it jumps to exit when it's done. And exit is here. Um, now, do we fill in this bonus score? We do fill in the bonus score. Initialize scores. There you go. So I'm going to move that. And I'm going to put it there. There you go. So, yes, fresh cat meat. That um, that that probably uh, that that method allowed me to kind of narrow it down. So, oh, stop it, fresh cat meat. Seriously, oh shit! Immediately you said that. I read half of it, and it's oh my god. I'm gonna have to go in a minute. Fuck's sake. Thanks for that. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. Right, let me. <laughs> I read half of that and it made me need a pee badly. So come on, come on, come on. Yes, it's working. Right, I'm going for a break. Be right back in five minutes, guys. Be right back. Did steps get them all then? Oh, God, I need to figure out a way of showing steps a different, different, <laughs> different image. Oh, no, he didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> you got the, What was the first one? Yeah, I need I need to I need to give steps <laughs> steps a different delay to everybody else somehow. Rockstar ate my hamster. That's a great game as well. Um Okay, first thing I'm a bit concerned about here is I don't see two players on this screen at all. Uh so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna run that again because I don't see two players there, so also, it's fucking freezing in here, so I'm going to turn... Oh, it is off. Turn that off. Oh my god, steps, seriously. You got that so quick. <laughs> oh my god, it's not showing the it's not showing the freaking things now. Okay, I've broken some in the bonus. I don't know what I've broken, but let's have a look. Fuck it out. What have I done? Oh, okay. Initialize Oh no, it shouldn't have broken anything. Uh 
hang on. Let me just move this freaking. I'm a bit concerned now that that. Hang on. Let me do it by doing it this way. Okay. Oh, did I delete something? Did I do something completely wrong? Yes, I did. Let me just put it there. Let me just see, because I've screwed something up here. Oh, it's a blue background with tree. I, I mean, a <laughs> credit to you for being able to to sift through hundreds and thousands, well, thousands of games. In fact, yeah, uh, there's only four hundred and fifty games in the quiz, but. You still have to know which 450 they are. I've got an advantage because I know what they are. Yeah, no players are appearing. What is going on? Oh my god, what have I done? Shit, maybe that... Maybe that... So it wasn't that... Okay, let's put that there. I mean, I mean, why, why, why is this not? <sighs> Thanks for the bits, Hayes. Thank you very much for the bits, Hayes. Appreciate it, dude. Um, I've broken these extra players, and I don't know how I've broken them. So I did have an and here, but I, I don't think that and is going to do anything. So let me put it back. Uh, the and was like this. Um, I mean, it shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't matter at all. Uh, but I'm going to put it in anyway. Uh, I mean, at this point, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Every code should have a ton of debug. Oh, didn't the players only show in level 9? You had level 8. Ah, yeah, let's... So let's see what happens here. I don't think this is going to make any difference. But yeah, then the next thing I'm going to try um, is to just put level 9 back again. So, um, oh my god, if that's the case, that's really fucking annoying. Yeah, no players. Okay. Level 9, though. Uh, let's put this back to level 23. Let's just see what happens if I put level 23 in. Maybe there's some extra stuff in, but... Um... Oh, yeah. I probably need to go and have a look at why that compare level 9 was in there. Does it really need players on that screen? No, it doesn't need them, but it just looks a lot better with them on that screen. So that's why that's why they're there. And you need you, well, it kind of does need the player. <sighs> okay, so this is yeah, this is related to that. Um, okay, so it breaks if I do zero eight. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Fucking hell. Oh, initialize player sprites in three and four. Oh, okay. Okay, so the player sprites need to be done. Oh, okay, so... So why is that there? If the level is... Oh, okay, I can... So it looks like this is here. Because if player current level is 9, it actually means it's level 10. Because the levels should start at 1, but the current level is 0 index, so level 9 is 10. 
Um, so what this is doing is it's skipping this bit, which is shifting the number, but it's also skipping all of this bit as well. So really what it should be doing is doing this bit here. Uh, I'm not sure what shift level number is doing, but if I do all of this first, so initialize the crown, initialize the player, jump to no crown, and then do this here. I think that should fix the issue. It's just not initializing that player, which is obviously going to break the... Uh... Oh my god, this is taking me so much longer than I wanted it to do. Okay, cool. <sighs> Cool. So, so the only thing we've got wrong at the moment is the crown on this side. So I'm going to fix that actually before we do the rest of the level loading. Um, so if no player has the crown, there shouldn't be an animation at all. So let's go through that code and just have a look. So, okay, so this is the code that runs uh, and the skip is done Actually, there is no skip now, so it comes into here, draws the player bars, then it sets the level sprite up. Uh, Learn accumulate the crown off tween, store D005. So I feel like this should not be happening, uh, but we need to work out where that crown update is. Uh, see if there's an update in here. Update crown tween index. Here we go. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to load. Uh, so this is line six eight nine. So we need to load the value from one of these. I can't remember which one it is now. So let's just scroll along. Fourth is the crown. So bonus count is plus three. If that's zero, then we don't do anything in this update. Otherwise, we just return. Okay, let's try that. So uh, I can get rid of that update label there. Does it need to be there? So what do I need to do? I need to get two players to the end without the crown. Okay, so where is the crown going to land? Okay, so I need to uh, I need to get this player around here like that. There we go. All right. Oh, damn it. Uh... Oh, no. Okay, it breaks because I'm exiting that function. So the update needs to happen, but what it needs to do is not... Uh, obviously, that update is doing more than just the crown, so we need to make sure we skip the crown bit, not the entire thing. So, uh, so I'm going to change this to a branch of equal. <laughs> Luna, I recognise this tune. This is a great tune, by the way. Steps, you did a really good job of this. So I think we need to jump to here. So I think that should be right, actually. No, you did. You did a very good job of it. It's very, very catchy, and um, and it's perfect for the game as well. Okay. Oh, shit, I've still got the crown. I need to drop that crown. Damn it. That's no good. All right, well, let's just check this works, and then I'll do it with, without grabbing the crown. I need to do it without having the crown on any player. <clears throat> okay, that seemed to be fine. Let's do it again without the crown, though, because that's where the problem is. Okay, so I accidentally grabbed the crown, so I'm going to stand over here so I can lose the crown. 
shoot this one. Oh fuck, I still grabbed the crown. Okay, at least here I can maybe jump over. I can just go that way, kind of. Oh shit, no, the crown is going to appear at the door. Oh, you fucker. <clears throat> It is. It's a, it's a really good tune, this. I like it. Did a very good job of it. Okay, I need to lose that crown. Okay, right, so. Now let's go this way. Absorb that. Right, cool. So, Jesus, that was... Oh, yes, yeah, two channels as well. That's that's also makes it insane as well. <clears throat> I forget that it's two channels. That's that's actually really impressive. I need to put both headphones in so I can hear it. Okay, that that was working. Cool. So, um right, okay. Let's let's begin <coughs> dealing with actual levels. So, let's start by setting the uh the map to load level zero in, uh, which is here. And then in here, we're going to do the levels. Okay, right, so now we can load uh, player current level. Oh, well, actually, we'll load that into X. Uh, no, we'll load it into the key layer. Then we're going to double that value because we need to grab the value in this list here. So we're going to double this value. So we're going to shift it to the left <laughs> and transfer it into the next resident. Now we can load um, level look up here. So uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is load 8600. I am going to call it, actually, I'm going to put a label in here. That's probably the best level look up. And we're going to use a vector here. So we're going to use vector one for level data equals vector one. <coughs> well, that wine is very good. This is cheap wine and it's very nice. Malbec, man. Can't beat a bit of Malbec. <laughs> CC4 is Spotify. It can play any tune. Yeah, you've proven that with Dadler's um Dadler's player. It definitely can. Oh, is it Dadler's player? I think it is Dadler's, isn't it? It's capable of playing anything. What was that? That was a very short tune, whatever that was. Um, okay, so we're going to store this at level data plus zero. Again, I, I always put the plus zero in because it just implies that there's, um, oops, it implies that there's more than one byte, so it makes it easy to kind of look things up. You can increase the X here and grab the second byte and put it here. Just makes it easier when you're looking at it. You can look at that line and store a cumulative level data plus zero, and you go, ah, okay, this is just one half. Um, Okay, so what do we need to do? Um, so the easiest way to do this is not care how long these levels are and just load um, load enough bytes to fill this area in. Uh, because it doesn't matter if, if, the, if the bytes at the end of, the, of this area are, are wrong um, or, or, or not relevant, should I say. Not exactly wrong, but not relevant because the level data will just look at what it needs. <clears throat> so what we can do here is if we... Um, we'll set a value, we'll, we'll, we'll put a value in 10, we'll call it page. Oh, a bit of Luma as well, a bit of Mike's music. Nice. Uh, and we're going to load three pages from memory. So this is going to be our loop here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, do, 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 do. this is our outer loop, uh, and we've got an inner loop as well here. And all the outer loop is going to do is just make sure that we reset y to zero. Although it should be set reset anyway um, by the time we've gone through this. Um, but we're going to use this to make sure that we, we advance properly through it. Um, we probably don't need to do it like this, but I'll, I'll have a look at what it looks like when it's finished. I'll probably probably change it a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to load level data, comma y, and Oh, we need we actually need a target as well. So uh, I'm going to call it target date. I'm going to put that there as well. Creatures, you got that one. Uh, Prow seven. I can't believe Thalamus got that wrong. He jumped to he jumped his guns and called it. Um, what did he say it was? Great Garner sisters. <clears throat> did it? Did Prow get that super early? Okay, uh, so we're going to need to set this value up as well. So actually, we need to set level data, which we've done there, but we need to set our target data as well. So this is going to be zero uh, for our target data for zero. And then this is going to be, uh, I mean, I probably should set the exact value. In fact, I, I will do it like that just, just to make sure that it's, it's correct. Uh, so I'm going to use the lower byte of map data, the upper byte of map data like that. There we go. Uh, and then we can store that at target data, comma y. Uh, and then we need to increase y. Uh, and if that's not equal to zero, in other words, we've not gone all the way around, then we'll go back to loop again. If we have gone all the way way round, then actually we'll make this in the x register here. Um, We'll decrease x, which means we don't need that page value here because we can just use x. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it should be fine. Data level one. Yep, that should be fine. Um, uh, and if that is equal to zero, then we'll go to exit because now we've actually copied all the level data in at this point. However, if we haven't reached that value, then what we need to do is we need to increment. Um, uh, increment level data plus one and increment target data plus one and then we'll jump back to outer loop so actually looking at this uh we don't need this outer loop we can get rid of that whoops uh oh shit where's that gone now uh because y will already be zero here anyway so we can get rid of that and it will just be jump to loop instead it doesn't actually change how many bytes we take, but it just saves us doing this load Y every time. Um, and that should be it. So this should load the first level in. So if I if I just switch these two around, what we should see instead now is, uh, uh, they were both called the same, <clears throat> is we should see Akmethin's level load now. And then all we need to do is, is make the... Um, yeah, there we go. Perfect. So this is loaded Acmafin's level in now. So let me just try going back again. Again, we're not using any compression here at the moment, um, but we will add compression, uh, decompression into this bit in a second. Uh, well, at some point, maybe. Uh, will we do it tonight? Yeah, maybe do it tonight. I think we've probably got time. I might have to go and grab some uh, code from Parasol Stars because that's probably got the best decompression routine that I've used so far. Um, but the next step is making sure that when we complete one level, so in this bonus now, when we finish, we need to... God, I've got hiccups so badly. Um, we need to increment the level counter. So the easiest place to do this is going to be when the, the crown is awarded or, or round about that location, um, because we may not award the crown all the time. But we do. We do award it here. Uh, so let's go and have a look at award crown. And that doesn't seem to care whether it's uh, one or two players. No, it's not. This is just set in the X position um, and then advance in the Y position. Okay, so this is not the right place to do it. 
uh, because this will increase the level every time. So what we need to do is um, when the level is incremented, so uh, where is it here? We're going to compare this to 04. Uh, if it's not equal to 04, then we're going to jump to here. If it is 04, then this should only be hit once. <laughs> Power Cell Stars will be will be back soon. I promise you. I'm really looking forward to it, actually. I mean, I have got an awful lot that I need to uh, to refactor in that, but it will be a good couple. The first couple of streams will be kind of a bit boring. Um, it will just be me moving code around, probably. Um, splitting some files into smaller files um and just kind of blanking out certain bits of code so they don't don't work so for instance one of the uh, there's two things that definitely need to change hugely first one i've already mentioned which is the sprites um the sprite multiplex in checkanoid is actually a sprite multiplexer from uh, parcel stars so i'm quite happy with that um, but the biggest problem is that the player uses three sprites so i'm going to have to change that um, but in order to do that, I, I'm going to have to have some art. To, I'm going to have to have a real good think about how that works. So I think the the first stage will will not necessarily be stripping it down to uh, two sprites, but we'll just be enabling um, player two, basically. So we definitely want two players in it. Um, and the other big thing is the the uh, the the pickups that appear. The method that I'm using for the pickups is a little bit flaky, and I'd like to kind of change that based on the stuff I've been doing recently on Checkanoid. Um, because it has a similar way of, of loading in to Checkanoid, but Checkanoid does it a lot better. Um, and and based on some of the routines that just the, the break a little bit here and there, I want, I want to change that system. So I'll probably revisit that. Um, and then other than that, really, it's just refactoring. But I, what I'm what I'm hoping to do is just before I start doing that is try and get somebody on board to. Um... It's weird. Rainbow Islands was never to... Rainbow Islands is two player, but it's not two player at the same time. I think it's take it in turns two player, which is kind of against the whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. It's not the, it's not the right formula, uh, but I'm pretty sure you can play two players on it, but it's, it's never at the same time. Um... Yeah, it doesn't count. You're right. It doesn't count at all. Um, but I, I definitely want to implement proper two players because one of the fun things about Parasol Stars is being able to pick up your opponent and, and throw them around as well. Okay, so we're going to increment the player level here. So then the only other thing we need to do is uh, in this routine here, um, so in this exit here, we can do uh, we can do the check here for uh check for close bonus now the reason it needs to be here is because this is only going to happen if the um if the crown has been awarded or or we're in a state where the um the, the bonus is over at this point um so at this point we can check for the joystick so um now we need to check two joystick controls here so we're going to check DC zero zero, and we're going to check uh, DC zero one. Now, let me think about this. So, if fire is pressed, that means that bit is turned off. So, if we and both of these values, then we will have zero. So, if we end it with that, and then end it with this, if that value is now um, zero then somebody has pressed fire. Which is enough for me. I think if you're playing one player, you're not going to suddenly go and press play, you know. Um, so I, th I think it's fine that, you know, either joystick can trigger this. So we will do this here, uh, and we will... Okay, so this if this is not equal to zero, then we're going to go to here. Otherwise, we need to do something which is going to exit the bonus. So this is where it gets tricky now. So I think the way we're going to do this is uh, we'll create a bonus exited here. 
which will start with byte zero. This will also need to be set on start here. So um, bonus exited. Rainbow Islands, Jason Page. Would we require both to be pressed? No, either player can press. And would require both to be pressed? Uh, no, either, because it's um, it's not... Um, the value goes to zero, not to one. So the value is held high, and when you press the fire button, it gets pulled down to zero. So what that means is the default is both will be one. So when you add them together, you'll get one. So what I'm doing is checking if um, either of them are pulled down to zero. So, uh, oh, actually, no, if both players press fire at exactly the same time, then this will fail. Oh, oh, I mean, that's, that's kind of rare, but um, I mean, you'd have to press on exactly the same frame for that to happen. So let me think about that. Okay. Um, so if you both press fire at exactly the same time, then you would get the and would succeed and you would fail that, that check there. Because zero and zero, okay. Your SID needs more volume when it comes on. What is yours? Lame and shitty. Is it really quiet? Okay. I'll 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 whack the volume up a little bit now. It's really lame. I, I I fully believe it. Okay. So maybe this needs an exclusive war. So if the hang on, yes, it needs an exclusive war. So if I use exclusive war here, what will happen is it needs both of them to be different. So if they're different, it means somebody has pressed the... Oh, no, because if it's both zeros, it will fail as well. Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, okay, we'll just, we'll just have to test them individually. I, think, I can't think of an easy way of doing this. So exit bonus here. Uh, and we'll compare the first one first. And... And that with one zero. Wrench if equal to zero, exit bonus. Otherwise, load that one. Uh, thank you for the follow, DQ Knight. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, exited. There we go. Okay, that will do the job. Okay. Not not ideal. I was kind of hoping I could do that with logic, but I kind of out logic to myself by by realizing I couldn't do that. Um, check if transition is over and jump to bonus screen. So if the bonus is active, we jump to bonus screen. Bonus screen is down here, and this jumps to loop. Okay, so what we need to do here then, um, jump to loop comes back to here again. Uh, not intro, game entry. Okay, we're going to have to do some clever stuff here, so we're going to need to, we're going to need to switch into the transition. Um, so there may be an extra transition bit here. Okay, so in which case we are going to check here if bonus uh, Okay, the bonus is exiting at this point. So if the bonus is exiting at this point, what do we need to do? So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the uh, the screen itself. So 
we need to clear the screen uh, and do the transition out. So here's our intro transition. Um, and then we have the transition out here, uh, which then jumps into the player level and goes to game entry. So actually, maybe all we need to do is grab that and jump to game entry. So let's try that. Uh, so here we would have uh, clear the sound registers, transition out, and then jump to game entry like that. That's going to be that way. Let's give it a try. It's worth a try. Uh, Rixium followed. Oh, thank you for the follow, Rixium. Sorry, I missed that one. I usually hear the roar, but I didn't this time. Oh, and thank you for the sub as well, Rixy. Very much appreciated, dude. Cheers, man. So I'm getting through the wine at some rate tonight. Oh, there's a CB Meek says, how's the wine coming? It's it's really good. I'm quite pleased with the wine choices tonight. So I started with um I started with this, which was a, a wine I'd not had before. Um in all honesty, I picked it because the label looked fancy. It looked like a fancy wine label. So I picked that one, even though it was a screw top. Um, and it actually turned out to be one of the nicest Sauvignon Blancs I've ever drank. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. It was relatively expensive. I think it was like £12 a bottle. I mean, I say expensive. I mean, it's not expensive for wine. But for supermarket wine, £12 is probably in the upper bracket. Um uh, oh, barefoot! Barefoot is nice. Which which barefoot are you drinking? Because there's quite a few barefoots. Uh, barefoot Malbec is nice. Barefoot um, Pinot Grigio is nice as well. I think it's Pinot Grigio here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, barefoot is all right actually. Barefoot's fairly cheap as well. That's that's the impressive thing with it is they've obviously got a really good kind of production going because they can sell a wine for fairly cheap. And and it's very good. So, oh god, I want to have a guess. All right, let's see what this game is. All right. Oh, Riesling, interesting. Interesting. Riesling's Riesling's a nice white. I do like a Riesling. And 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 to be honest, German wine generally is not my thing but uh reasoning is kind of yeah it is a little sweet do you know what i uh oh god what is that i don't know what that is yeah i have no idea what that is um i actually like to cook with seriously eldritch how the f no you got it right you got it right <laughs> you got it right man um, yeah, I like to cook with Riesling because it has that sweet aftertaste. It's almost a dessert wine in in a sense. Um, there's also lots of types of Riesling as well. There's there's some there's some reason that's not quite so sweet, but um, depending on which kind you get, it's kind of nice. Do you know what I like to cook? Sprouts in Riesling. So cook your sprouts. You know, boil your sprouts like you normally would do, and then while they're still kind of al dente and a little bit kind of crunchy, um, cook some bacon lardons in a pan with some butter. And then when the bacon's cooked, pour maybe 100 mils of Riesling in into the pan and then throw the sprouts in as well and just cook it until the, the wine's gone. Oh, it makes it's the only way my kids will eat sprouts. They hate sprouts, but when I cook them, they like them, mainly because it's got bacon in it. But I think the wine helps as well. It adds a little sweet, sweet flavor to it. You can thank uh, Delia Smith for that idea. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can load another level. So I'm just going to do one player for now. I don't really care about the second player right now. All I care is that I can advance to the next level. So, And this is the first time in 50 episodes that we've been able to play more than one level. So I'm hoping what we see here is a bonus and that nothing is broken here. Okay, so we've still got the crown award, which is fine because I picked the crown up. So that that's obviously going to do. No crown is awarded because there's not two players here, so that's correct. Uh, and now I should be able to press fire, and nothing happens. Okay, right. So let's go and put some breakpoints in. Let's go and see that a breakpoint in the uh, check for close bonus is happening here. So let's just check for that. Let's make sure that is working correctly. Maybe it's only happening once. 
instead of every frame. From Cyan Tech to just go. I do like cooking. Cooking is probably my my second um, uh, my second kind of hobby after after computing. I do, I do like to cook. I do like to. I have lots and lots of crazy recipes that I try. Um, I've talked about it on stream before as well. I I do love cooking. Um, maybe I'll do a cooking stream one day. Maybe I'll do a cooking stream one day. I don't know though. It's not quite as interesting, is it? Cooking. I mean, I I like it. I like doing it. But oh, okay, that breakpoint is not being hit. Okay, you'd actually watch a cooking stream if you were. I've got a brilliant apron, so I've got um. So one of the uh the my other kind of hobbies, uh, hobbies or interests, is a uh, Terry Pratchett novels, uh, and I've got a load of aprons with Terry Pratchett stuff on them, um which I like. I never wear them, but I just I got gifted them one one Christmas and I've just kind of kept them. Um but I would wear if I did a stream I would wear them. I I I very much doubt I'm going to do a cooking stream though to be fair. The problem is is most of the stuff I like to cook with the exception of some of the some of the very very quick stuff like carbonara and stuff like that. Most of the stuff I like to cook is quite long uh long cooking so um no, is it one of those aprons that are fake naked ass on the back? No, I just cook naked. I just cook completely naked. It's a real naked ass on the back. <laughs> um, yeah, mo most of the stuff I cook tends to be kind of long, long cook stuff, like, like slow cook stuff, and um, I just like the flavor you get from kind of slow cooking things. Um, like I do, I do a, a quite a, a simple bolognese, but there's two two ways I do it. So there's a fast way, where I use oxo and marmite, and I hate marmite, but it works really well in bolognese. Trust me, put a spoonful of marmite in your ragu sauce, beautiful. Um, so when I want to cook it quick, I put oxo and I put marmite in it as well, and it kind of adds the flavour. But if I want to do it properly, I will not do that at all. It will just be tomatoes and garlic and onions and i will just leave it for a long long time and just cook it like reduce it really down and it makes a very similar flavor but you just have to kind of leave it for a long time so my wife is slow cooking some white chili tomorrow oh nice white chili what's that what's white chili mama and oxo honestly try it make a bolognese make a bolognese ragu so tomatoes garlic uh onions um, you know, your Italian herbs, uh, put put all that into a pan, cook it, and instead of leaving it for half an hour to an hour like you normally do, just put a spoonful of a little teaspoonful of marmite in it and half an oxo cube. And honestly, beautiful. Just use dolmio. Oh god, dolls. No. No, bolognese sauce is so easy to make. Don't use dolmio, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. So you're using like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know what white chili is then. Yeah, I've had it before. <laughs> See you in about three hours, yeah. Bread making is something I'm not very good at. I keep trying to do it and I keep failing at it miserably. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about me making bread, but I cannot do it at all. Um, yeah, Marmite is yeast extract. It's, Marmite is not very tasty either. Seriously, Acmafin, order some. It's kind of a it's kind of a running joke for the past fifty years in the UK that people either people either like Marmite or hate Marmite. I absolutely hate it. It's disgusting. Um but in it, it adds a little bit of an extra zing to something, so um but I, I, I t like people spread it on toast and it's the most disgusting I can't believe they do that. Uh why dog poo is a great substitute if you're out of marmite. <laughs> that's not fair on that's not fair on white dog poo, to be fair. Marmite is worse, I think. Um if you eat mammy live, what is that? Is that like Sturm Strong or whatever it's called? I don't know what that is. Is it what's that what's that fish thing? Is it Sturm Sturm Strong? Stern, Stern Strumming, that's it. That's the 
Oh god, yeah, I would not eat that stuff. Storm storming, sir storming, yeah. But that Swedish shit, no, it really is shit as well. It smells like fucking puke. It's disgusting. <laughs> Vegemite. I think Vegemite is probably the closest you get to Marmite. Um, gas masks are futile, <laughs> yes. Vegemite is worse than Marmite. Wow, okay. That's, that's some impressive, some impressive shit if it is. Add permitted term Swedish shit. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I don't even think Swedes really eat it. I think it's one of those things that's kind of a historic kind of delicacy, but but doesn't really. Swedes don't really eat it. They just they just like to kind of give foreigners a go at it now and again. I mean, I might be wrong. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe Swedes love it, but um. I get the impression it's more of a, a thing you you give a tin of it to somebody if you kind of if they're foreigner and they don't know what it is and then the moment they open it they start vomiting um we hate it <laughs> i can imagine yeah it, i mean it's not nice it smells like vomit it's in fact it smells worse than vomit it's it's horrible it's rotting fish it's just oh oh god it's making me feel sick thinking about it oh oh uh, anyway, um, <laughs> getting distracted now. Right. Um, okay, so we're not hitting that uh, that break point in here, which means we're not. This is not being called. Oh. Okay, so we need one place where we can check for this every frame, uh, and only if. Okay, we can do it. We can do it up here in the updates. Uh, do bonus stage here. So you see here, uh, we compare the bonus stage if it's four, then we get them to award crown. We can just do that there. I think that should be fine. Um, update. Do bonus stage. Okay, let's try that. Let's see if that act activates. Oh, is it actually illegal to open up in door? I'm not surprised. It is fucking horrific. Um, isn't it? Isn't it traditionally made by burying fish or something? Don't you? Don't you bury it for like? Don't you, I think you cook it and then bury it, or you stew it and then bury it, and then uh, like like officially like proper legitimate ster Um and then you have to dig it up like two years later or something, and then and then um and then and then it gets I think it gets pickled or something like that. I can't remember. It's got a really weird um thing. Okay, so this is being called every frame. Okay, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I think it's something like that. I think you have to. Um, I, I think you have to bury it for. Two, I think you have to stew it. So you cook it and stew it. So it's actually cooked fish, but then you bury it. I don't know why they bury it. I don't know why they don't just leave it somewhere. Um, and then after two years, it's it's dug up and pickled, um, and then tinned. Oh, kimchi is very similar, though. Kimchi is uh, fermented pickled cabbage, isn't it? So uh, I like kimchi, though. It's nice. Kimchi is all right. and doesn't smell like puke, so. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm getting really distracted by this. I mean, I'm enjoying the talk. Okay, let's get rid of the break. Let's point to this one here. So it seems to be working now. Yeah, kimchi is nice. Kimchi is really good. It's it, it's like when you have sushi and you have the ginger at the side. It's that kind of uh, palate cleanser sort of thing. Although I don't like ginger on sushi. It's, I, I, I don't get it at all. Why do they make it pink? Why does it have to be pink? It's just like, no. But yeah, I do, I do like to cook. Um... I like to uh I like to cook in kind of authentic ways as well. So one of my one of my favorite ways to cook is the um rodizio style of barbecuing from Brazil. Um unfortunately I can't really do it here because I I'm not allowed to use a barbecue on my on my balcony and I don't have a spit in my kitchen so I can't really do it. All right, that's not let me Okay, it's not working. 
Uh, but Rudizio is really good. It's where you get a massive chunk of beef. It's a very specific cotta beef. And you roast it over a spit slowly. Uh, but you, you rub rock salt all over it. And you just keep turning it and turning it. And what you do is instead of cooking the whole thing, you cook it, you cook just the outside of it. And then you shave off the outside with a really sharp knife. You shave off the outside and you eat those pieces. And then you put it back on the spit again. And so the, depending on how long you keep it on the spit, you either get rare or, you know, well done. Um, and it's just a beautiful way to cook beef. And it's, it's by far the nicest beef I've ever eaten. So uh, thanks for the follow, Lard Beans. And thank you, Warlock, for reminding me of that. I'm becoming numb to it because I'm just talking about food. It's making me hungry. Uh, okay, why is that not working? Uh, okay, close. Let's have a look. Oh my god. I don't care, really. I really don't care. <laughs> No, I'm sure some people do. <laughs> Who requested that, Eldritch? <laughs> Maybe if we won more things, I'd care more, but... If I hear that, it means we've come third in something. It never means we've won anything. Um. Okay. Uh, check for closed bonus. So I, I'm a bit worried that this is not happening all the time. Um, so this is the main update here. Okay, so this is loading draw total scores. Uh, I'm going to move it to here. I'm just going to make sure that this... So I know this is the wrong place because this is going to allow me to close the bonus at any point and I don't want to do that. Um, but what I want to do now is just check that it is actually reading that value at some point. So Because it seems like it's not for some reason. Uh, okay, wrong guy. Good choice of tune, whoever picked this. Warlock, well done. Good choice. Okay, so I'm going to let it play through, and then I'm going to try and press fire. Okay, so I, I just think the fire routine is wrong, although we're not hitting the break point. Um, actually, did I take the break point out? Maybe I, maybe I took the break. Oh, shit, what have I done there? Oh, I've got eight cups now. Great, I need more wine. Oh, yeah, I took the break point out. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, okay, so if player one, so if joystick port two presses fire, then it would jump to here because this would be equal to zero, um, which means in here, okay, let me put the Bonus exited. Okay, let me let me put the breakpoint here. So I'm not sure what's going on here. If you ever leave the US, England would be your first choice. Uh, I mean, okay, but I I, I think rose tinted glasses are a thing <laughs> thing there. Uh, England is not great. It's not great. We have quite similar problems to what you do in the US, but just maybe not to the same extent that you have them in the US at the moment. Um, uh, there's there's definitely problems here. Okay, that's still not working. Why is that not working? Um... I think this is where we need the debugger, right? I think we, we've we've avoided the debugger completely tonight, but let's let's go ahead and do that. 
So um, let's get rid of that breakpoint there. Let's go and put it back in this place. Let's move uh, the code that checks that. Actually, let me just undo some stuff. So I'll probably this check for close bonus. So let's move it to there. Yeah, but let's put the breakpoint back down here. Oh, no one got it. Line of fire. Interesting. I don't know that game. Does anybody know that game? I don't know why I picked that. That must have been a must have just been a game I picked because it had a had a well known publisher. No I need to go and have a look what that is. And then I'll say C sixty four. Uh so it was uh oh it was a Sega game. That's probably why I put it in there. Oh why I mean Okay. Uh, it got. Let's have a look at lemon review. Lemon reviews are pretty. Oh my god, it got thirty two percent in zap. <laughs> That's quite bad. You don't know most of the games in the quizzes. I'm sure you will learn after a while. I mean, they're they're going to repeat. So, problem is you got to compete with um. You got to compete with steps, and he knows everything. He didn't know that one, though, actually, so, you know. Take solace in the fact that he doesn't know every single game on the list. It's kind of worrying how many he does know, though. You kind of know what Steps was doing in the 80s and 90s. He was just on his Commodore, sat in his bedroom, playing the Commodore. I mean, good man, that's what I, that's what I was doing as well, so... Okay, it's not it's not hitting that break point. It's not hitting that break point. Um I'm playing a league a meager lot on some C sixty four. You've played a lot. I mean for you to for you to pick some of those games out, you've either you've either played them or you've you've played them recently or you played them back in the day or you've played the, or or you've read about them in magazines as well. Um Steps is learning how to cheat at quiz. <laughs> I don't think he's cheating. He's just he just knows his shit. He just knows he knows these games and he knows them well. Oh, okay. I think I'm kind of misunderstanding what's going on here. So let's, because I, I don't think this is being called. <clears throat> So okay, this is our update. So what is this update doing? Okay, it's, it's jumping a few steps ahead. Uh, so it's saying tween index. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we get to this point. Then this is just doing a loop. So we are hitting this do bonus stage every time. Uh, but then in here we don't ever seem to be pulling this close check for close bonus. And check. F oh, fucking hell, I didn't put the break back in. God damn it. All right. I'm such a moron. Yeah, that was the only place I needed a break and I didn't put it in. <clears throat> I might have to have a break myself in a minute. <clears throat> I must admit, part of my motivation for doing the quiz was to kind of inspire you guys to play games that you may not have played played before. Um, so, as I say, I put all the games I played um, in there. So, um, well, I probably haven't put all of them in. I probably missed a few, obviously, but I, I've I've put most of the kind of games I played in there. Um, but I've also put games in there that I think um, that did well in terms of kind of. Oh, there we go. That's actually being called now. Okay. Um, so let's put that in the debugger. Well, I don't even need to put this in the debugger. Let me just have a look at what the fuck is going on here. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping there's some games that I played back in the day that you guys see and think, oh, okay, okay I'll give that a go. I mean, I wouldn't play Line of Fire because it got 13% in, in Zap, so can't be very good. Uh, 
The most recent review on Lemon says, one can argue there was no way to do this game well on the C64. Still, it could have been done better, as testified by Operation Thunderbolt. Wow, okay. Anybody who's saying Operation Thunderbolt is better is... Wow, okay. Uh, Space Gun and pretty much any sprite-based driving game. Turbocharger would be a good example, being Crush Sharma. The only vaguely commendable point is the 3D corridor effect, and even that is less than what it could be. Uh, compare the pseudo 3D dungeons in Sega's Fantasy Star or closer to home, the tunnel level in Platoon. Yeah, so that's a, that's a kind of fairly kind of objective kind of review. Um, but yeah. Action bikers to C64, what GTA 5 was to PC. Ooh, bold claims there. Bold claims. Um, that is very bold claim. In fact, wasn't Action Biker the the Quavers game? Wasn't it a game related to Quavers in some way? Or am I am I imagining that? Skips, that's it. I knew it was related to something like that. <laughs> Skips. Oh my god, that's that's another one that the Americans won't have. Check if bonus exit is actually being set on. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Uh, so, well, we're hitting this. We're hitting this point here. So, we're we're definitely checking that every frame. Uh, what worries me is is whether or not that's actually being set. So let's have a look. Uh, okay, so I'm going to load the joystick and I'm going to end it with one zero. So that's either going to give me one zero or zero. It's going to give me zero if the uh, if the fire button is pressed, which means we would jump to here. So let me move that breakpoint to here. Uh, and then we do the same on joystick port two. It could simply be that these values are not set because they're actually used up in the other. I've had this problem before um, where actually the joystick values and not being picked up probably because they've already been read that frame. And when you read them, they clear. Um, Chewitz had Rampage. Rampage was Chewitz. I remember that. Because uh, you know, I think they had an advert where they had the monsters, like the Godzilla or whatever. Um, and so uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Imagine or... I, I, I don't actually know who tied it to it, but um, whoever was doing Rampage at the time tied it to Chewitz. And yeah, it was it was literally just it was like tied into Godzilla and stuff. So although they didn't never mention Godzilla, it was just it was Chewitz. I think that value has been reset. I think that's what it is because I'm pressing I'm pressing fire now. Oh oh shit! I'm pressing fire, and now it's always going into that section. Okay, now nah, now nah, I'm really confused. The break is here. Bonus acid is not happening. Oh my god, I'm missing all the follows tonight, aren't I? Uh, did I miss Lard Beans? Thank you for the follow, Lard Beans. And thank you for the follow, uh, UA's IX as well, or UI's 9. Uh, appreciate it, dudes. Um, I'm, I don't know what, I think I'm just getting drunk. I think that's what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink a bit more alcohol. And in a second, I'm going to go for a. I'm going to go for a smoke. Um, okay, so I'm I'm hitting this value. I don't trust that break there. I'm going to move it to here. I know it's probably all right, but I'm going to move it to there anyway. <laughs> Better yet, force it. Yeah, that's a good point actually. Forcing it. It's such a small thing. This should have been done ages ago. I'm just going to do it with one player. Shimabot for president. <laughs> It'd be a better president than what you guys have in America right now. That'd be for sure. It'd be better than the prime minister we have as well. There's no fucking clue what he's doing. Honestly, I've seen fucking three-year-olds with a better fucking mentality than Boris Johnson. 
It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's not get into politics. <clears throat> I do care about followers. <laughs> Interested. Thank you for the bits, Hayes. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a very, very quick break now because uh, I do need to go to the toilet. I'm going to smoke my one of my last two cigarettes. Um, or last three, I can't remember. I think it's two. Um, and then when I come back, we're going to do the stuff that uh, fresh, fresh cat meat is suggesting. So we're going to find out where that value is in memory and we're just going to set it just to see if if this bit of code is actually working um and then if that's working we can kind of work our way backwards through things so i'll be back in uh, five minutes guys be right back who's gonna get this one then oh i know this one <laughs> nice. <laughs> Actually, Back to the Future Two, I couldn't put in because Back to the Future Two has the logo in it, so I couldn't, I couldn't use it. I saw Hayes on fire for the first two, though. That was pretty impressive. Okay, uh right. So let's let's get this value uh somewhere in memory and just try setting it manually. Uh so let's find it in here. God, I'm feeling very drunk now. That's fine. So I'm going to load it in the debugger, which is going to allow me to actually find this value in memory and change it directly very easily. If I can find it in here, bonus exit, uh, 5e29. Okay. So let's just get to the end and then... Oh, God damn it. I knew it was going to start two players. Okay, let me... to restart again <clears throat> all right let's give this a try just put that there so it don't get it's easier to look at when it's not flashing its arse off colors look awful in this in the debugger i've got to say Right, okay, so now the bonus is loading, I'm going to jump to 5e29 in memory, so 5e29, which is this area here. Okay, so if I put 0, 1 in here, okay, nothing happens, so I'm concerned that that is not doing anything. Uh, so let me just go and have a look in here. Uh, so what we're looking for is bonus exit in here. I don't know where that is. So let me see if I can find that. And, uh, okay, it's not giving me a memory address for that. Uh, okay, that's going to be... Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, can, I can do that by going into here. <laughs> He's about to fall asleep and then the quiz break happened. You did really well. You got two of them. 
Only time Steps doesn't win, I'm I'm impressed because Steps is like crazy. I will start another one in a minute because I kind of enjoy the quiz breaks. They're kind of good. They're kind of cool. They uh, even if I do say so myself, I'm I'm quite pleased with how they've turned out. Okay, so let's go and stick a break point. Five uh, e two nine is where. The actual oh bonus exiting is at seven one f one. Wow, we're that far along in the code. Ah, uh, just doing here. Sorry, seven one f one. Okay, so this is this is the uh, the area which is checking. You can see it's checking five. Okay, let's put breakpoints in both of those. And let's go to five e two nine. But it doesn't look like it's actually running this code at all. It doesn't look like it's getting into this this chunk of code, which is probably our problem here. Yeah, see, it's not getting down to that. So it's not actually getting past this this point here. In fact, it, it's like it's not even getting into this bit here. Because um, if I look at the code, if I just do it in this mode. So... End level loop, yes, uh, but it's never getting to bonus screen. So I think that the bonus screen stuff is broken somewhere. Um, so let's just have a look what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so we had actually removed a lot of stuff from here. So I'm wondering if that is the bonus active. If it's not jumped here, otherwise jump to bonus screen. Bonus active. So bonus active should be set uh, as soon as we start the bonus. Bonus active is set here. Okay, so let's just check if that's being cleared anywhere. So we set it to zero when we initialize, and then it's set to one, and then it's not touched again. So it's making me wonder if bonus active is even being called at this point. Um, so let me have a look in here. So, uh, where's bonus active in here? I don't see it anyway. Let's scroll up to the beginning. Uh, bonus active, here we go. Oh, is it accumulated with bonus active? Oh, now that's. Okay, here, a 5DE5. Okay, so let's go and have a look at 5DE5. It is zero one, 1, so you would expect that to be... You would expect that to be correct at this point. Let's put a breakpoint in there. Let's get rid of this one here. We seem to be stuck in this loop here, whatever this is. Uh, so this is the end level loop. Okay, so that's this bit here. Uh, ah, okay. Yes, okay. Brent, you can clear end the level loop. Okay. So this is doing the bonus update. Okay, let's have a look at that. So I think we're just misunderstanding what's happening here. Uh, so BCC end level loop is this bit here, and we do hit that. Um. But then what is the next step after that? So we jump straight back to here. So this is never actually... We jump to bonus update. And then we clear the carry flag. And if the carry flag is clear, we jump to here. So actually, this, this is always happening. This is never happening. Uh, and this is what should be happening down here. Okay. So this section here is never being called. So let's get rid of that. What we want to do is jump to here. Um, so actually what we should be doing here is we should be doing this check for bonus exited. Uh once you've carry clear end level loop. So let me change that to end level loop here. And let me get rid of that code there. Maybe that will give us what we require from this. So uh I'm gonna have to check the values again. Five E29. Okay, it's remained the same. That's fine. 
we do, we were just never checking that value that's that's the problem we would never actually get into the point where we were checking that value so i think this is going to work um bonus bonus exited okay fresh company says the joystick check said bonus exited not bonus x okay i i, I think this is going to work i think the problem was is that the the main loop that was calling that was was not um a bit of umpire again I don't know why, but this hump stuff is really growing on me. Uh, I can't explain why, but it is for some reason. Okay. So we're in the bonus now. Now, I think, I think what should happen here, let me just get back down to where we were, which was 718. Okay. So in here... So this was the block of code that we were checking, and this is where we're... Uh, no, it's not that, is it? Hang on. End level transition. Let me just scroll through this a little bit. So we should get to here, hopefully. And we do. Okay. So now it's actually checking that value. And you can see it's checking every frame. So I think if I turn that off now, and I restart and I press fire, uh, which is that one. Okay, that's not working from the fire button, but let's go and set that value manually. 5v29. If I set that to 0, 1. Okay, so that seemed to work. Okay, right, so... Oh, living on a prayer, take my hand. Yeah, it's uh, Bon Jovi. <laughs> so we can get rid of all of that, and then we just need to go and check. So I can get rid of that as well. We just need to check that that value is being set. So, um, hey, DXMon, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. And I remember now, dudettes, not dude. And I didn't say dude then. But I should, if I did, I should have said do that. So welcome to the stream. Um, <laughs> life is good, yeah. And this wine is going really quickly. It's been a while actually since I finished two bottles of the stream, but I'm doing a six-hour stream. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're on, uh, what, this would be five hours now, just approaching, just just past the five-hour mark, I think. I think it actually does say on my stream somewhere. I don't know where, but I'm pretty sure it says somewhere on where uh, how long I've been on. Uh, yeah, just over five hours now. 5.02, thank you, Akinfid. Okay, so question is now, is this value setting properly? Um, I think that's the only issue we've got now is that this isn't actually setting the value correctly. Uh, am I in the right place? God, I've, I've drank so much I can barely remember what the hell I'm doing there. But yeah, so this break has never been hit here. So this is being hit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these for these joy values um, because these joy values should be uh, read every frame. Uh, I hope they're still read every frame. If they're not, then we might have to do that somewhere, but um, hopefully they're not cleared. Fixing mistakes in KiCad with uh, with Mech keyboard design. Oh, awesome. You're making a mechanical keyboard. Man, that's cool. I'd love to make my own mechanical keyboard. That'd be amazing. To be fair, it would just be the Commodore keyboard. <laughs> I don't think it'd be much different. But maybe with slightly lower profile keys. The keys on the Commodore are far too high. Line one, two, three, six. It should be bonus, bonus exited. Okay, let me check that. Uh, no, because we're already in bonus. 
so the bonus is the namespace for this particular file. So that that's unnecessary. We don't need that here. Open source hardware and software uh, with a rather unique scan mechanism and lighting. Oh, you've got lighting on it as well. Oh my god! Right, hang on. <laughs> I need to stick a follow on you there. Uh, oh, how do I do that? How do I actually do that? Uh, uh, there you go. Followed now. So I am going to keep an eye on that at some point. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, thank you for the follow, J-Switch. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm not hearing the, these. Do I need a new new thing already, or is it just because I'm drunk? Maybe it's because I'm drunk. Yeah, let's go with that. It's because I'm drunk. Oh, oh my God. I swear Hayes has a stopwatch for this shit. I can't deal with it. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's, it's good. Fresh cat meat is really good to have somebody checking this stuff, so. So I think I don't think um, many people know. I think this is a very British version of the Entertainer, um, and many people probably don't know where it comes from. Um, I can't remember his name there. I think it's that. Yeah. I think it's Les Dawson anyway. I can't remember exactly, but I think it is Les Dawson. Uh, they did this originally. I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me. Uh, why? Why is that value not being set? Because if I if I if I grab that value, if I set that value, it works, right? So. Something in here is not setting that value right. So let me put that break right up here. What am I doing wrong? Am I am I just being an idiot? Am I doing something stupid in here? Bonus exited. So bonus exited. Let me just double check my stuff here. Bonus exited is definitely a value in here. So that's fine. This should be so simple. Oh, what game is this? Who's going to get this? Oh, oh, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It's not called that, Steps. It's not called that. I thought it was called that, but it's not. <laughs> It's, it is it technically is Batman the movie, but it's not called that. That's not its actual name. No, it's just called Batman. That's all it's called. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hey, Proton. Welcome to the stream, dude. You've caught me like the last hour or so. I've got, well, maybe an hour and a half or so. I'm having a nightmare with what should be the most simple thing in the world, but uh, for some reason, for some reason, I'm having a nightmare, so. Yeah, it is just called Batman. I actually have it. Um... Yeah, I have it. I have it here. I mean, it's my own version of it, but you can probably see from the logo, it is just called Batman. Uh, it is. Uh, it is an official disc, but it is. It is just Batman. 
Although I think in some of the, um, I think in some of the uh, marketing materials they did call it Batman the movie, which is probably why Steps went for that. So one two two five area fake check joystick can pretend fire. Oh yeah, that's that's what I'm doing with the uh, that's what I'm doing with this breakpoint right now. I I want to step through and see what happens because I I'm I'm really not um I'm not convinced about this at all at the moment. Whatever it is, it's really fucking small thing at the moment, and I think I've just had too much alcohol to be able to deal with this properly, which I'm upset about. Okay, so, okay, now I get the break point. So, load accumulator with joysticks to everyone. So, if I step through that, it's going to grab FF, right? So, then if I step to that, it's going to give me one zero. But if I pressed, okay, let me, let me load 3E with uh, zero zero, which would imply that everything has been, been pressed at this point. Okay, so step from that again. And I get zero zero, and boom, we we get that thing. Okay, so, and it's loaded the next level in. Okay, so now I'm thinking that this joystick read is wrong. So I'm going to put that back to DC zero zero because that seemed to be right. This is ABBA. Honey, honey. Yeah, it is. It's ABBA. <laughs> I, I love ABBA as well. That's another one of my, uh, my guilty pleasures is a bit of ABBA. It's definitely ABBA, right? It is, yeah. It's definitely honey, honey. Meh, 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 meh. Oh. Yeah, it is ABBA, definitely. I recognise that kind of that style of melody is is ABBA all over. Honey, honey. Meh, 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 meh. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to clear the screen here. So that's an easy task. So um, oh my god, I can't believe it! It was I don't even know what I did to fix that. I'm I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Okay. You hate these rock songs, but I really like this tune though. This is good. Oh no no no! You won't oh. Copyright strikes, I don't care about copyright strikes because on Twitch, they barely matter at all. You would have to play the original song and a decent amount of it. Um, but with um, YouTube, it doesn't matter anymore. I've, I've removed them from... Uh, there's no music at all in my YouTube videos now. I've removed them. So the music is recorded on a different channel. So while you guys can hear it, the video that I record has four channels and the, the music is separate from them all, so I can remove it completely. Dancing Queen, good choice. Oh. Oh, God, that. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I try to kind of... I, I try to keep the music in there, but it's just got to the point where I can't do it anymore. Um, they, they pick up, like, the tiniest little melody from any tune. Oh yeah, you can do never ending story all you want now, it doesn't matter. Until Twitch start banning me for it, then I, it really doesn't matter. Uh okay, so we need to clear the screen at this point. Now, do we have a clear screen? Let's have a look. Uh no, but I have a feeling we do for something, so I just want to have a look through here. Uh okay, this is normal loop game entry. 
Uh, Chris sound registers, no. I'm surprised there isn't a clear screen. In fact, I don't trust it at all. Uh, uh, okay, I'll I'll put a clear in here. Whatever. Pretty sure I don't need this, but for now I don't really care. So uh, store accumulator and Caesar. Well, let's 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 use the screen band values. I won't lie, I kind of know Spice Girls quite a lot as well. I had a phase when I was, I want to say a teenager, but I was when I was in my 20s. Uh, colors of the world, light up your life. Girl, light up your life. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sing it, but yeah, <laughs> I I really like Spice Guy. I, I had a, I definitely had a thing for the Spice Girls back in the day. Uh, LDX zero. Uh, well, this. Yeah, because I'm using the index here, so I I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking. Is that what you're asking? Because that looks right to me. Baby Spice, yeah, I was a Baby Spice fan as well. Uh, yes, yeah, no, that should be that should be fine. I'm I'm just clearing the screen at that point. Um. So one thing I do notice is that the transition out is completely broken. So um, well, let's have a look at what's going on. So the actual flow is working now. We're getting into the second screen, which is good. Um, just going to do it with one player, and we're going to have a look at what's going on and what might be broken and see how we can fix it. It's probably just some settings that need setting for the transition out to work properly. Um, Okay, so let's slow this right down. And let's look what happens. Let's try and get an idea of what's going on when, when I press fire. So, oh, interestingly, that's not working now. Why is that not working now? What the hell? Why do players lose their nose when fat? Yeah, good point, actually. Don't know. <laughs> Single player book. Good point. Let's try that out. Maybe, maybe because no crown is awarded. That's a very good point, actually. Very good point. Let's try that. So let's try uh oh, calls, god damn you. Not that one either. Let's do that one. There we go. So let's try two players this time. I think you might be right, actually. I think it is a single player book. My god, you're on form, Fresh Cat Meat. I like it. It's good somebody isn't drunk. So I think you're right. I think that what's gonna happen here is because the crown does get awarded. So I just let it play through. Crown is awarded. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's the next thing to check. Okay. So check for close bonus. So that's called here. Uh, do bonus stage. Um. Okay. So let's check where do bonus stage happens. Ooh. 
Load the bonus count as plus three. So this is going to tell us if a crown has been awarded or not. Um, if it hasn't been awarded, it's going to jump to here, which means none of this runs. But that shouldn't affect this bit here. Uh, there is no jump past this point. So why does this fail? Okay, so let's go and have a look at the bonus stage. So here we're checking bonus stages. Maybe we don't reach bonus stage four if the player... Okay, so if we're on the last stage, race win. Uh, skip the whole thing if one player. So we compare X to three. Uh, okay, so I think it's this bit. Oh my god, bubble bubble. Awesome. Uh, didn't grab crown. I don't think it's the crown. The crown is, is a separate thing, but I think it's to do with this bit. Um, so this is checking if we're on the very last bonus stage. Uh, if we're not on the last bonus stage, we come to it. However, if we are on the last bonus stage, we come to this bit. And this checks which players are active. If both players are active, then we jump to here. If not, then we jump all the way down to... Where is it? Here, which is not this bit. So I think we need to change the exit to finish stage. Bit of Dancing Queen, I like it. Even the Dancing Queen, oh yeah. You can dance. Having the time of your life. Yeah, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot, though. Uh, okay, uh, right, what was I checking? Uh, I think that should be that. Because if we are on stage three, but no players are active, then we should jump to the next stage. So let's do that again. I think that should work. Please sing. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm singing again. Stop it. God damn it. Yeah, I think this is going to work now. There we go. Okay. So the only thing we've got to deal with now is the weird kind of uh, end of the bonus. So so first of all, let's uh, let's complete this one because it's not really going to matter. I mean, it's going to load a, an incorrect. Oh, that was weird. That side of the screen went all funny. Um, that's fine. This is a really good version, actually. Oh, look at the crown. It looks weird here for some reason. Okay, right. So let's slow this down and let's have a look what's actually going on. So we, we've got some issues with our kind of multiplex stuff over here. Um, there seems to be a break up here, which something is something is going weird here. Okay, so... There seem to okay. Ignore the fact that the level is wrong. It's just because the wrong level is loaded in. Well, there isn't a level there. That's why. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So there may be something we need to set up before that 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 transition starts. So this is what we're doing with the the transition here. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at title screen destroy because maybe that has some stuff in that we need to uh title screen that's not that one is it where is that title screen i mean that intro here here we go title screen um so actually all that is doing oh okay title screen destroy is actually clearing the screen ramp 
let's go with that rather than the the, the thing that we've done so um we're doing this at the moment so let's change that for really good choice i don't know who picked that but it's really really good choice i like it but please no more because <laughs> i'll just keep singing it <laughs> thanks cb meets oh yeah i remember you saying actually yeah oh never ended story as well Oh, nobody's going to get this game. I know this game because I played it a lot, but I don't think anybody else is going to get this game. I play this a lot because of the BBC Micro. There's your only clue that you're going to get. Uh, thank you for the follow, Khan the Maestro. Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, oh no, I've got it. Oh my god, seriously, steps. How do you know that game? Wow, impressive, man. <laughs> that, that's impressive because the only reason I know that game is because I played it a lot on the BBC Micro. Um, oh. <laughs> Oh man, that's unfair. That's unfair. Google cheat. It was one of those those games in the BBC Micro days that was. Uh... Oh, why is that not? It's not clear in the bottom though now. Okay, I I want. Also, this this crown looks weird. I don't know if it's something is. Hang on, let me just. Yeah, something is eaten into the data of that sprite for some reason. You see how it's different here? So there's a few little things we need to work out. Why is the why is the top of that sprite being overwritten? Is it to do with the no, it can't be to do with this, surely. It can't be to do with the new map data. Um <laughs> I'm going to give a, give you guys another quiz because I'm taking less breaks. So. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued what this might be. Oh, I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is, but there's two of them. <laughs> yeah well done well done <laughs> uh okay so problem is this title screen destroy is not actually clearing as much as we want it to do this is actually only clearing uh 570 6 760 characters so this is not actually clearer than a knot here. Um, but it just start. Oh no, it's not starting on the top. Look, it's starting six rows down. This should should be fine. One hundred sixty-six rows down, two forty. This should be fine. Why is this? Oh, okay. First of all. That should be zero at this point. So that's that's one of the big problems there. So I don't know why that wasn't set to zero. It must, we must have assumed it was zero going into that function. Uh, which is a bit worrying. You knew it was Bert. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Burk even. I need to stop starting two players. It makes it much more difficult for me to, to complete the level. For some reason, loading the second level in destroys the crown. So I think this is probably going to be the um, the starting point for the uh, for the next stream is going to be getting this this stuff to work. 
it needs to clear the top as well. So you see there was some stuff at the top. Um, uh, let me start this in one player so it's a bit easier to see. If you eat, the crown falls off. Yeah, if you open your mouth then uh, wide, then your crown falls off. So you, a, another reason the other player needs to be uh, aware of what's going on. You can chase the other player around if he's doing really well. So if two players go for an enemy, um, you have to be a bit careful about whether or not you eat straight away because the other player can steal the crown off you. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Shrek VHS. Shrek VHS. Can you even get Shrek on VHS? I guess you probably can. It's probably just at the end of that time, isn't it? The original Shrek. Mainly. Yeah. But welcome to the stream, dude. And and thank you, uh, Warlock, for reminding me. I, I'm, I'm being really kind of been really slow with this uh notice in the follows tonight i think i'm just a bit too drunk i don't i don't think i need to do a new thing i think i'm just a bit drunk or maybe i'll turn them up let me turn them up a little bit then maybe i'll hear them a bit louder okay so let's have a look at this in slow man let's see what's happening let's uh, in fact, let's go for 10 percent. let's go right down to the, the low okay So actually, the only big problem here is that we have the word bonus at the top. Everything else seems okay. I mean, there's a bit of glitching in it, but we can fix that. I think the biggest problem is we have the word bonus at the top. So the question is, how do we fill that in? Is it just enough to clear the title, or do we need to clear some more on top of that? I think we're going to need to clear some more. So let's go and have a look at what's up at that, that spot. So let's start the game. Is this supposed to be a crown when it's just player two? No. Uh, and, and the thing is, at the moment, is the crown is just being spawned in the level. So one of the things we'll probably do very early on in the next stream is make sure that the crown doesn't spawn until uh, it's awarded. Uh, so you'll see it's not awarded in, in, this, in this here. Um, so when we start the next level, we shouldn't see the crown. But at the moment, it's probably, it is probably being awarded. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to check that area of memory up there. So let me just uh, go into machine monitor. I really hate that that's broken. Um, uh, in fact, I can just do that. There we go. Okay, so I can see we have some stuff here. This looks like it's non-zero. So whatever that value is there, we need to make sure that that's filled in all the way down through five rows. So let's go and have a look at C00 there. So 2.9, I need to put the value 2.9 into all of those rows. So that's the first thing I need to do. And let's have a look if that looks all right otherwise. Yeah, it kind of looks okay otherwise. So um, is that assembly? It is, Yazik. And thank you for the follow, Yazik, as well. Appreciate it, do. Yeah, 6502 is easy, really. As I've said before on the stream, it's it's really just a matter of learning the 30 or so opcodes. And once you learn that, it's really not that difficult at all. The harder thing is actually learning the hardware. The, the harder thing is learning what all the different memory addresses do and the kind of the intricacies of dealing with kind of the VIC-2 chip and the SID chip and stuff. Um, so if you can get your head around the assembly, you, you've really... you've, you've You've mastered six five zero two. Six five zero two is not hard to master. the The difficult thing is the, is the memory addresses. Um, okay, so what I want to do is this is not quite enough. So what I need to do is I need to load the value two nine, and I need to store that in the first five lines of the screen. So uh, let's store that at screen ran plus. Well, I don't need plus anything there, uh, and it's five rows of forty, so that's two hundred. So that's C8 is what we're comparing to. Uh, so there it's a C8. Uh, and the point should not equal to here. And that should hopefully clear that top area. And, and, and that should mean the screen is properly cleared at this point. unreadable for me it's re it, this is the thing it's unreadable because i think most people are used to looking at javascript so most people are look are used to looking at something like this right and they can 
they can read these kind of statements because they're written in kind of pseudo English, so they make kind of sense, right? Uh, I mean, you can, I mean, it's not the neatest JavaScript in the world, but you can, most coders can read this regardless of which discipline of coding they've come from. You know, this is C style coding. So if you're used to C, Java, C sharp, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, that sort of thing, you'll be able to read this very simple. But even if you've come from things like Python or Ruby and stuff like that, you can, you can look at this and say, okay, I kind of get what's going on here because the constructs are kind of the same. You've still got ifs in here, even though the tabbing on that is terrible. Um, you've still got fours in here. You've still got variables, which are obvious are they're being assigned and you've got kind of expressions. Things make kind of sense. The problem with the problem with assembly language is you don't have that kind of you don't have that level. So what you're doing is you're looking at this and you're trying to you're trying to identify those same patterns and they just aren't there. Um, but what you've learned very quickly is these three letter codes, these op codes, um, there aren't that many of them, and all they're really doing. Um, you can kind of think of assembly language as um, uh, as a language with four named variables, accumulator x and well three named variables actually accumulator x and y and then a whole load of a whole load of kind of memory which can be any variables you want it like a huge array of sixty four thousand uh, values so um it's really it's, it's really just kind of learning that actually all assembly language is doing is moving a value from one variable to another variable from one variable into the array, which is memory, um, or adding values to that, or to subtracting values from that, and that's it. All you're doing is just moving these values around. So to draw something on the screen is just moving that value into the right place. So yeah, it's um oh my god, some more more Spice Girls. Yeah, assembly language is not as complicated as it seems, especially six five oh two. Um, it just doesn't look like normal programming, so. Do I dare? Yes, I dare. I'm going to do it. Hang on. No, that's not what I wanted. Ugh, fuck's sake. Fair enough. Who wrote this? I wrote this SID request system. <laughs> I had to write a system that allowed you to to type something into chat and um and pick one single tune out of the fifty thousand tunes that are there. I had to pick one tune. So you learned, but you probably learned uh you probably learned x eighty six, which is to be fair is a is a punishing version of assembly it's a very punishing version of assembly so um i honestly don't know why they teach x86 uh, um in in colleges and universities because for me x86 well okay it's good to kind of understand what's going on but if you want to teach somebody assembly it's not the best starting point you can teach somebody something like z80 or 6502 um and you will be able to pick up the fundamentals of how processes and memory work in conjunction with each other. Um, and you will, once you understand that, you can then apply it to x86. Just jumping straight into x86 is horrible. And I think it's a really, it's a really unfair way to teach people assembly. And it, it kind of puts people off, I think, uh, which is a shame. Uh, okay, so I wanted to check that this is working. Okay, so let's, let's try. But yeah, don't don't assume that um, assembly language is like x86. x86 is probably um, probably one of the worst examples because it's designed. It's not designed to be human readable. It's it's designed for compile C compilers to do their job as efficiently as possible. That's why it has shit loads of registers. It why it, that's why it has lots of kind of different addressing modes and stuff. Um, I I would definitely recommend one of the early eighties uh programming uh, assembly languages to to learn six five uh, to learn uh, assembly language, and once you understand 
a single version of assembly language, then you kind of get how all processors deal with data. You get that they have registers, you get that they have stack, you get that they have memory, and you get how they all kind of work together to create the kind of patterns that you need. Um, uh, okay, so one final thing is wrong there, and that is the color RAM is wrong. Uh, so in here, I really probably should move this to somewhere else, but uh, uh, okay, so I'm going to have to do this on two separate lines like this. I don't think I've named anything color RAM, so I'll just call it that. As I say, the hardest thing the hardest thing with C64 assembly is learning what all the different addresses doing. Um, but yeah, I, I, X86 is brutal, and X64 is just the same multiplied. You know, it's 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 not it's not a good language to learn. I, I actually think the best language they could teach to to give a modern kind of take on it would be ARM. It would be some kind of ARM assembly because uh, it makes more sense in terms of kind of modern programming, but it's not as quite as brutal as um, as x86. I actually want to do some streams on ARM at some point, so I want to do some stuff on the, the Game Boy, which I realize is kind of a very reduced instruction <laughs> set compared to modern ARM, but um, certainly better. The numbers go the right way around. <laughs> hey, there we go. And um, we're in the new level. So the only thing I'm worried about now is the fact that the um the crown is kind of looks broken for some reason. So I just want to have a look at the sprite pad. <coughs> oh god, excuse me. <coughs> I think I'm gonna call it a night very soon though. So I'm I'm kind of pleased with where we're at, but I just want to check a few things, see if I can fix stuff for like the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, oh, I have no idea which one it is. No, it's not that one. It's that one, isn't it? It's this stupid one in the middle. Okay, so we have this sprite. See, it's right down here. Um, Which makes me think it's to do with the level. Ah, I see how the level is there, and this is here. Makes me think the level sprite writing code is wrong. So let's go and have a look at that. Rosanna. Draw a level number. Okay, so I think it's to do with this. So let's go and find that. Okay, so uh, this is... Where is it storing it? Okay, it's storing it here. First, clear the numbers. So this is what's clearing it. Uh... And it's clearing thir oh that's what's wrong so we're clearing 32 rows 32 bytes of the sprite but actually what we want is 24 so we want 1 8 and the reason is because the character is 8 high but the sprite is 3 wide so 3 times 8 is 24 so that's that's the problem here i think so let's give that a try <laughs> Yeah, I I think ARM would be the better uh, better choice. I I think X eight nobody really writes in X eighty six anymore. And while it was maybe a thing in the kind of early nineties to kind of uh to to kind of do things better than the C compiler could do with games like Quake and stuff, they quite often did that. They'd have inline assembly in the C code. Um, it's really nobody really does that anymore. There's no need for it. Processors are so fast now. You don't you don't really need to write inline assembly. Um, and the only people who would probably do that would be like the the real kind of low level um, uh, 3D engine math guys might do some stuff. But even then, they're probably not writing it um, in C. They're probably writing it in, in shader code anyway. They're probably writing in HLSL or GLSL or something um, and not writing it uh, at the C level at all. Um, there's really not much point in it at all. Whereas ARM, I think, is is more uh, practical, and certainly the the fact that Nvidia have bought the uh, 
bought ARM means we're probably all going to be using ARM anyway soon, so. Easier, yes, but less capable. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, but, um, of course, Steps got that. All right, let's see. So, colors should, yeah, that's fine. And the crown is correct. Cool. We're on a roll. Right, so the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to award the crown to the right player here. Um, it shouldn't be awarded to the player at all here. So all I'm going to do is just go in here. Player's crown zero. Uh, player crown position, yes. Okay, so should the crown be on here? Um... So this is our crown X position and a Y position, which means it is actually being shown. So what we need to do is make sure it's not being shown if it's not actually available. Um, so we have crown four, crown pickup. So I'm going to just try setting this to zero, and see what happens. I think that will make the crown off screen somewhere. So I might try and do it and just walking on and off the screen and just make sure I can't pick it up. But I think that should be enough to stop it appearing. Um, then all we need to do is make sure that it's attached to the right player at the end. So don't see a crown here. But if I... Oh, no, you see that I grabbed it as I walked off the screen. Okay, so that's not going to work. Um, okay, let's think about this. Okay, let's let's put another value in here. Let's put crown available. Which we will start at zero. So when we come into here, oh my god, this is four non blondes. What's going on? Yeah, I, I honestly, I honestly think ARM is is probably, I think it's a much better, a much better entry to assembly language than x86. It's, it's just a weird thing to force students to learn x86. And I realize where they're doing it, they're doing, um, you know, professors and, and universities and colleges are doing it because they want, they want computer science graduates to understand the inner workings of a processor, not not the kind of electrical inner workings but they want them to understand the logic gates and how things are working and how how you know how actually internally the processor is taking c language and turning it into machine code and what the machine code is actually doing um so that's what i think that's why they teach x i think that's why they teach assembly i don't know i never went to university for this stuff um but I, I don't think AR, I don't think x86 is the right one to pick for it. I think it should be something like ARM. I mean, it does honestly. It doesn't even have to be modern. They could teach six five zero two, and it would teach the basics, and it would be so much easier for guys for for people to pick up, and they'd probably get more of an affinity for it. They would probably feel a bit more, um, like like it was something interesting to do. It's such a shame. It really is. I think I think computer science degrees can sometimes teach people some really bad habits and kind of give people the wrong feeling about things as well um yeah it's it, yeah exactly any asm is a really good basis uh i know 6502 is old and it's not used in almost anything any anymore but um honestly knowing 6502 has improved my coding in numerous ways because I understand now what's going on. When I create a loop, I know what's going on. I don't think it's just some magic where, you know, there's, I, I know it's not interpreting for as a for loop. I know that that's somewhere a register is being set, it's being incremented and it's being compared. I know what's, I know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, mainly an FPGA course. Oh, interesting. It doesn't surprise me. It's it's an incredibly simple but yet yeah, very very powerful uh, language. So it, it's it's a shame. 
Uh, and it's not just that. I mean, it's it's the same with things like um, uh, functional languages, for instance. I think one of the... Oh, what was the one somebody came to us not long ago and said, oh, yeah, I've been taught this functional language. I can't remember what the language was. There was some crazy functional language. And I was like, nobody uses that. Nobody uses that. And you can use functional programming with many other languages. You don't have to use these obscure things because some professor who's never touched real world code in 20 years has told you to use. No, it wasn't Haskell. It was worse than that. Uh, I mean, Haskell, Haskell still has its uses, right? Um, oh God, I wish I could remember what it was. No, no, it was really obscure, really, really obscure language. Um, oh God, I, 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 do you know what? I'll try and find out and and get back to you guys. But um, it was it was some really, really, really obscure uh, functional language. And they hated it. They hated it because they had been taught this thing that was just not useful. It didn't really have any real world use. So um, when we started trying to push functional programming, uh, in, well, this is the thing. We were trying to push them to use functional programming in JavaScript. They hated it. And they ended up leaving the company because they didn't want to do it. Um, and it's like, well, it's not the same. When you're doing it in JavaScript, it's not the same. You're still using JavaScript constructs, but you're doing it in a way that's functional. It's the concept of functional languaging that you, you should learn. So you should try to learn it in a way that's um, that's more relevant to what you're doing. And unfortunately, professors tend to be, you know, 20, 25, 30 years in the job, and they don't really know the modern kind of stuff, or, or many of them don't anyway. Um, no, it wasn't either of them as well. God, I wish I could remember what it was. Let me have a look. Uh, functional program. Let's have a look. Yes, it's none of those. Uh, no, I'll, I'll try and find out what it is. But it was it was kind of a random one. PL one. No, it wasn't PL one either. Um. But yeah, one of one of the kind of the, the main concepts of functional program, the the the, the kind of use of pure functions, uh, was something uh, we we pushed a lot in the JavaScript engines that we were using because it, it allows us to unit test better. It allows us to um, it allows us to create kind of very predictable units of code. Um, uh, thanks, CB Meeks. Thanks for joining the stream, dude. Um, and and yet, yeah, just trying to trying to explain what is a very simple concept to somebody that had been taught uh, functional programming at university was really, really, really difficult. They just didn't want to know about it. Uh, and I think it's because they'd learned, they'd learned this obscure language as an introduction to functional programming, even though they'd been doing JavaScript, they'd been doing Python, they'd been doing C, all languages which can kind of utilize functional programming in their own way. And while they're not you know specifically designed to be functional they can definitely they can definitely use it um you know i i just found it annoying i found it very annoying but you know i'm out of that now so <laughs> i don't care anymore now i have to deal with security bullshit so Yeah, Rust Rust actually really interests me mainly because it's it's kind of picking up it's kind of picking up speed with um game developers. More and more game developers are, are using Rust now, which which is uh I find interesting. Um Java, yeah. <laughs> Java makes it yeah, uh, I mean don't get me started on Java. I did Java for a while and I, I wasn't um I wasn't overly impressed by it. Um, I, I moved on to C Sharp basically as soon as it came along. And I was like, oh, my God, C Sharp is just Java, but better. Um, and I definitely, if I have to pick between the two, I definitely pick C Sharp now um, as that kind of managed memory, uh, managed memory kind of language. Anyway, right, I'm getting distracted. Um, okay, crown available. So we're going to use crown available to decide whether or not we need to draw the crown. Uh, on whether we need to pick up the crown as well. So 
the first thing I'm going to do is um, uh, crown available. I'm going to check it here. Uh, if that's uh, if it is available, then we're going to jump to here. Otherwise, we're going to not bother drawing the crown at all. Now, drawing the crown is one thing, but we also need to check if the player can pick it up. Now, if the crown is not of oh god, pardon me. If the crown is not available, and then we shouldn't be able to pick it up either. So, uh, crown pick up. Here we go. So we we'll do the same thing here. We're going to do a uh, crown available. Uh, branch is not equal here, so the crown is available. So we're just going to jump to here. Otherwise, we've got the hiccups now from the wine. I uh, love the chit chat here. Yeah. Uh, sorry for just no, no, it's fine. I, I like, I like chatting about these things. As, as people who join my stream know, I like to talk about these things quite a lot. Um. Um, and I like to hear your guys' opinions on it as well. You know, I don't know everything. I don't. I, there's quite a lot I don't know. Um, I'm very kind of segmented in what I do, so it's always it's always nice to hear everybody's opinions on this. Um, it's good to hear from people who are kind of um, who are learning these things at university and college, and and kind of what their opinions on it. Because I, I I never went to university. I never went to college. Well, I I, I did a brief stint at college, but I never did computer programming at any level i don't even have the most basic high school um qualification in, in programming so um so it's always good to kind of hear what what goes on in these things and, and what i've learned in my career in programming which i managed to do just by doing portfolios and stuff is that actually the way that there's two kinds of people that apply for the jobs that i was interviewing for quite a lot there are people who who have been taught this at college and university and that's the extent of their knowledge they 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 leave university they go home they don't touch code and then there's people who regardless of whether they did it at university or not it's their life they do it outside of college and they you know they they um when whenever that whatever they do whenever they get home they sit on the computer and they learn um and that's what i do uh where did you learn the most yeah books books mostly yeah uh <clears throat> books mostly um so when i was growing up obviously <clears throat> i grew up in the the kind of uh, 80s early 90s so so it all for me it all came from the library i used to go down to the library um <clears throat> i used to sit in the library for three four five hours reading books on computing and just kind of learning things um with the commodore 64 it was difficult because i only had one book um on assembly language i knew the basic because i had the uh the programmers not the programmers reference guide sorry the other one the uh uh just the user manual uh but assembly language i had one book uh somebody gifted me a book on dr watson assembly um and i didn't have the assembler i just had the book about it but i didn't have the assembler so i ended up writing my own uh assembler program um it wasn't very good but it, it did the it did the stuff um no i did i i coded i coded c64 uh late 80s very early 90s <clears throat> um but i i wasn't i wasn't uh, you know it was it was just hobbyist programming it wasn't anything um crazy so community student is learning that if you don't learn program by yourself you need these <laughs> I wouldn't say uni is useless, um, but what I would say is that there's definitely those two types of people. There's the people that leave university um, and go home and don't do anything. And they expect that everything they've learned in university is enough to get a good program job. And while they probably will get a job, uh, they won't be amazing at it. The people who are amazing at coding are the people who, when they finish their education and they go home and they sit in front of their computer, they constantly learn they're constantly learning they're constantly programming they make games in their spare time they make applications in their spare time those are the people um that do really well so um you know you don't need it uh, i'm i like i say i don't have a single qualification in computing i don't even have what you you know high school diploma gcse whatever you whatever you used to call in it i don't have any of that i have nothing um as far as as far as official paperwork i don't know how to do anything on a computer 
I started with the uh, BBC Micro, which I have back there, actually. Um, so I started in uh, BBC Basic, um, and then I got a Spectrum, uh, and I did a bit of stuff in Spectrum Basic, and I liked that, and then I blew my Spectrum up, trying to wire scale electrics cars up to it. Um, so I got, uh, my mother got me a, a, a C64 replacement. I was really upset because the basic was fucking terrible. Um, and then somebody gifted me the Dr. Watson book and I was like, okay, I can probably try and learn a bit of assembly language. And then, <coughs> um, sort of most skilled pros and like, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think being, being academic in it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Not saying that you you know you can get a you can get a degree in it and not know anything. Of course you can, but um, I think it, it has to be more than that. It has to be a passion to do it anyway. If you've got the passion for it, then you'll be good at it. So, okay, Yazik, thanks for joining the stream, dude. Uh, some of the absolute worst than I got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> yeah, same. I I know. I'm not going to name any, it would be really unfair, but I definitely know a few people um, who on paper seemed like they should know everything, uh, you know, academically they should know everything. Uh, but when it came to actually doing the job, we're not very good at it because they just didn't have that passion for it. So, okay, so we're going to in the award crown, which is here. Uh, the crown is awarded here. So, um We've got lots of jumps to exit here. We've got some increments here. Uh, there we go. Load one player has crown. And then I'm also going to store that at uh, crown available. So we'll store that at crown. It doesn't really matter if it's one or two because we're just checking for non zero. Uh, so it should be fine. I think I'm going to call it a night soon. I think I'm almost to the end of my wine. I think I've, I'll go for another break in a few minutes. Uh, then I'll finish my bottle of wine and then I'll call it a night. <clears throat> yeah, and, and I think, Misty, it's, it's one of those things that doesn't come from uh, being taught. I think you have to just... It's an experience thing, I think, more than anything. You have to, as I've I've said many times before, what you have to do is you have to, okay, play one as a crown. Okay, so we should start with play one as a crown. So what you what you have to do is you have to, um, you have to kind of okay, go right. My my knowledge level is at zero percent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something, and this something that I'm going to write is going to require 1% of knowledge. And you have to have the motivation to want to do that. So you go ahead and you try and write this thing and you, you write something that's terrible and it takes you ages and it's full of bugs and everything. But in the process, you upgrade your knowledge to 1%. So now you've managed to write, I don't know, um, a simple, like the, I'm trying to think of the most basic thing, you know, a, a basic program which takes your name and replies with hello and your name, right? You've learned the most basic thing. You've learned about program flow. You've learned about variables. You've learned about IO. You've learned about writing to the screen. You've learned a few things. You've, re you've raised your knowledge to the 1% level. And then you go, okay, I want to try something else. So you go, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to try something that's going to take my knowledge to 2%. And the trick is to always be doing something that's just slightly ahead of your skill level. And that's the only way you'll learn. Um, you have to go and you have to go and find the information yourself. Okay, so, so this player did not get the crown, so we need to check why this player should have got the crown. It's not available at all, actually. So now I'm intrigued. Is it is it there at all? No, it's not. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and take a quick break. I've waffled waffled a lot. Yeah, today that is Google, and the thing is. I can't believe how easy people have got it nowadays. You know, back in back in our day, and I know I'm going to sound like an old person here, but back in our day, you had to go down to the library. You had to kind of, you had to research. You had to find the find the information. Uh, nowadays, the information is seconds away. Um, back in the day, 
it used to be you know hours and days away nowadays it's seconds away all the information you want um well th this is the thing if you can't use google you're not going to get a long way programming you need to at least learn how to use google um yeah i i still prefer books as well that's why i that's why i have some books lying around for various things i do so still prefer it all right i'll be back in a few minutes guys i'm going to leave you with a quiz uh and i'll be back in uh five minutes or so bear back All right, I'm back. I'm going to let the quiz play out one more time. I'd like to see it. You've got the last one. Let's have a look. Uh, looks like Eldritch got it last time. All this programming talk, yeah. <laughs> uh, Fabian Code, thank you for the follow. Thanks for the reminder there, Warlock. Okay, I'm going to let that one play out and then stop the break i'm not going to code for much longer now um i'm feeling really drunk as soon as i got up I, I realized how drunk i was um i have had pretty much two bottles of wine tonight so it's probably why i feel quite dizzy right now um oh i realized as well what the uh what the language was while i'm gone i just want to know what this game is oh my god what is that oh ah i knew that as well steps beat me to it damn it's quick man so the language, and I need to just check that this is a language and I'm not just thinking this in my head. Um, yep, it is as well. Elm, it's called. Um, and I know of it and I, I, I've i heard of it, but in terms of a language to teach somebody to get a job, it's a terrible idea. Nobody uses it. No, nobody's going to use it in... Uh, um, Nobody's going to use it in any kind of uh, production environment. Anyway, not that I know of, but um, yeah, it's called Elm, um, and it's uh, it, it has functional kind of elements to it. So, um, okay, um, let's let's try and get this crown thing working, and then I'm going to call it a night. I think so. What we're trying to do now is make sure that the crown appears on the right player. So, for the crown to appear on the right player. Um, this value up here, player has crown, needs to be set. Um, and crown available needs to be set. So we need to check that these values are set. So we've, we've actually got a marker for that in here. So 3F0E. Thanks for the follow, Blueberry Moon. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so I don't know how familiar you guys are with Elm, but it's um I mean it's not a bad language, don't get me wrong, it's not a, it's not a bad language at all, but um <clears throat> in terms of people being taught it at university, not a great idea in my opinion. <laughs> nearly four AM, yeah, it's nearly four AM here as well. So you're in the UK as well. Uh good night, Elm. Um didn't <laughs> good good night, DX Mon. Thanks for thanks for joining me. And see you again soon, hopefully. All right, let's um, let's finish a level and see what happens. There we go, UK as well. Yeah, UK massive. Okay, so the the place we're looking three F zero E. So let's go and have a look at that location three F zero E. Okay, so this is our has the crown, and nobody's been awarded that at this point. Oh, because this has been one player. Shit. Okay, so I need to make this work with two players. Okay, so first of all, I need to set my joystick to use both. Uh, so there's a whole thing around the, the the start of the game as well and making sure that both players spawn, which now I have. But what I need to do now is make sure that I can get to the switch at the right time. So um, one player is going to be a little bit behind here. So if I do that, 
Shit, that wasn't that wasn't good enough. Uh, shit. Okay. Okay, I just need to do this a few times until I get it right. Okay, so I need to get this player over to here. Spawn the other player on top. Then I need to somehow make sure that whoever's slower. Oh fuck! Now I'm now I'm really screwed. No, that one I need to die. Come on. <sighs> Oh wow. We got two jokes at one stone from, from Shimmerbot. There we go, right. Shimmer has improved. <laughs> okay, so the crown has been awarded now, so let's go and check those values. So was it three F three F zero E? Let's go and have a look at that. So the crown has definitely been awarded. And if we check in side crown, crown available should be set to zero. So, uh, sorry, it should be set to one at this point. So seven long from that. So and that is definitely set. So these are both set to one at this point. Uh, now, if I start the game. Ah, crown available is set to zero. So crown available is set here all the time in initialize. So what we probably need to do is move initialize out of whatever the game entry is here, crown initialize here, uh, and move it to here. If this works, I'm going to go to bed. If it doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably cry. Okay, let's get two players on. So we now don't have the crown appearing on the screen, which is exactly what we want. But now one player is going to win the crown. And that seems to be player two. So now when we start this level, player two should have the crown. Which is not... Mm. Uh, so there seems to be a size adjust thing that's going on, which is, is breaking it. Uh, and that's probably because the size is different at this point. So we probably need to make sure we reset the size before we start. So let's have a look at that. Um, we kind of need to reset the size as soon as we exit the bonus. So let's do it in here. Let's see if that fixes it. So this is where we're resetting the size. This is where we're resetting everything. So let's let's just put um, reset player stuff, we'll call it. And this is player, player one size. Okay, I'm going to turn off the SID request now because I don't think there's going to be enough time to do any more, so. Oh god, I'm feeling really hiccupy. Okay, so SIDs are off now. Yeah, Kung Fu is eight minutes long, so. So we've got at least eight minutes of stream left. 
thank you guys for for sticking around so long tonight um i'm impressed you guys are hardcore Okay, so we're expecting player one to begin with the crown. Boom, we have it, we have it. Uh, okay, let's make sure that the uh, player eat count is working correctly at this point. So, seems to be. Well, I mean. I mean, obviously, the next level is going to be wrong, but we might get an idea. In fact, it's going to crash as soon as it goes into this level because it doesn't exist. Okay. So, one thing I noticed then is this 1000. Oh, maybe, no, maybe that is right. Okay, I need to check that again, but I, I have a feeling it um, it carried over that count, so... Good idea to sleep like two hours before. <laughs> yes. Saturday stream is the best stream. Always good fun, shy and stressful. The races, I mean, yes. Uh, we're not gambling. You are gambling addicts. You are all gambling addicts. Streaming over... Oh my god, yeah, it's 4am. Holy shit. Um, how long have I been streaming for? This must be... Yeah, over six hours. Wow, okay. Yeah, Saturdays always are the longer stream, uh, definitely. And I, I, I really enjoy the Saturday streams. I'm really looking forward to getting Parasol Stars in there. Um, right. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm looking at here is that the bars start at zero, which they do here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to do nothing with player two. I'm going to do everything with player one. Um, just in an attempt to make sure that. So player two had nine thousand five hundred. I want to make sure that player uh, player two doesn't have that when we go into this next step. So, so I want player one to get there first. I want player two to be second. Player one had the crown. Okay, so so the score is correct at the bottom but what isn't correct is the height that the bars are at um so that should be easy enough to fix uh, i think in here player bar height okay so when we start the level bonus so when we start in here Uh, we need to set zero. Player one. What's it called? Player bar. That's say. Like... Player bar height. Okay. I should fix that. I see. So I think you're pretty solid on this. So I think what we'll do on the um on the next stream is we'll fight red can't see with a crown on oil and it falls over his eyes. Yeah, so what we're gonna do on the next stream is exactly that. We're gonna um we're going to adjust the crown position based on the frame that's been displayed. Because at the moment, it's just kind of based on a really bad table. Um, I'm going to rip that code out and replace it with, given given the player frame, what is the um, what is the correct position to show the, the thing? And then it will be the same for both players. And it will be consistent. And it won't be some, some terrible, terrible system, that, uh, terrible system that I've got set up right now. Um, the other thing I want to do on the next stream um, is the compression as well. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna fix the editor. So the editor shows. So I want player one to do all the work here. So I need to go and steal the crown off this guy. So there we go. All right. 
character. I want um I want player oh god damn you. Oh you son of a Um I I will fix the editor so that um the, the levels output the right format. I may even add the Xmizer into that as well. Um oh, player two one there, but whatever. Should start at zero, that's the point. Yeah, which it does. Cool. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's where we're up to. The level counter goes up correctly. The Oh, the player score is wrong. Okay, so the player score that's here needs to be copied into the level when it's finished. Um at the moment it's not doing, it's resetting that. As you can see here, player two got loads of points in the last round, but now we're only on 5,000. So I'll do that as well while we're at it. Um, player one score, here we go. So, um, score. Actually, I'll do that on the next stream. I, I, I'm, too, I'm too drunk to try doing that now. It should be pretty easy, though. We just need to copy it from zero page. We need to reset it in zero page. And then we need to make sure it copies into the score after each round. Um, yeah, we'll we'll do the compression. So I'll I'll make sure that the the editor outputs XMized versions of the levels, and then we'll we'll add some XMized um, decompression code uh, and get those loading in properly. It shouldn't shouldn't be a huge. I mean, that'll probably be. I say it's probably going to be done in an hour, but look at how it's gone tonight. Some basic basic stuff has has taken ages. So. Um so yeah, that's what that's what we'll do next time. Um let's see who's streaming. Mr. Cola is streaming. Let's go and have a look at Mr. Cola. I don't know what he's doing. He seems to be chatting at the moment. Uh oh, he's got a SNES Everdrive. Oh, let's go let's go and raid him. Okay, cool. Um I shall see you guys on Tuesday for some more Game Boy Z80 stuff. I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do is start looking at the music routine. Uh, I need to kind of dig into it a little bit and see if there's an easy way of doing this, but I have a feeling I'm just going to have to write it from, uh, from scratch. All right, let's do one more quiz before we go then. Let's, uh, let's force that quiz on now. Um, and let's see what happens. So I'll do a quiz in a race and then, and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll jump into, to raid cola. But yeah, we'll we'll look at the Game Boy music routine. I I kind of have an idea what to do, but I, like I say, I've never written a music routine before, so it should be should be quite interesting. It's funny that I'm going to do a Game Boy Z80 uh, music routine before I do a Commodore one, but you know, whatever. What is that? I have no idea what that is. No idea at all. Seven cities of gold. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I feel like I should know this as well. It looks Yeah, I don't know though. Steps doesn't know. If Steps doesn't know, then we're all screwed, right? Google tell me. <laughs> Dizzy down oh. Oh. I should have known that. I should have known that. I, I'm I'm annoyed that I didn't know that. Arcade stuff takes a lot of effort to stream for real hardware. It's a part time job to set up stream every week. Yeah, I can imagine. Um. Oh, has it already raided? It has already raided. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> 